Thumbs Scott, up. Are you, Scott, are you Adam. controlling our mute or are we controlling it? Okay, well, it's seven o'clock, 7.01. I'm gonna call this meeting to order. So thank you everybody joining us for the Gosstown School Board meeting on April 20th, 2020. I do need to read the right to know law. Due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12 pursuant to executive order 202004, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I am confirming that we are providing public access to the meeting by telephone with additional access possibilities by video or other electronic means. This meeting is being broadcast on local cable access Goffstown, as well as on the Goffstown YouTube channel. If anyone wishes to provide public comment, please go to the SAU 19 administration building at 11 School Street. There will be a laptop in the lobby for those who wish to make a public comment. Please respect social distancing and remain outside the SAU building if another individual is in the lobby. We previously, six, 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 ugh, I can't even talk, <laughs> so, uh, posted this information and this body has consistently followed through on all the requirements pursuant to holding a meeting in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12. In the event this public is unable to access the Zoom meeting due to a widespread system problem, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call. We need to take a roll call attendance. When I say your name, say here and if you are alone. Dan Cloutier. Here, I am alone with a headset and a microphone. Thank you, Dan. Ellen Vermakowitz. You have to unmute, Ellen. Here alone. Thank you. Tim Stetson. Here, always by myself. Zuzana Buzel. Here alone. Janelle O'Brien. Here, all by myself. Okay, and Jared's not here yet. Ginny McKinnon. Here alone. Retta Chaffee. Here alone. And I'm Heather Trapez and I'm here and alone, but I also need to take attendance for all our administration that is here. We have Kathy Stoyle, which is the Glen Lake principal. Here, I'm alone. Jerry St. Joilet, Bartlett principal. Oh, <laughs> you're still muted. Here, alone, sorry. Thank you, Jerry, that's okay. Susanna Pishka, Maple Avenue principal. I'm here alone. Thank you. Wendy Kohler, Mountain View Principal. I'm here alone. Kim McCann, High School Vice Principal. Here and alone. Thank you. Brian Balky, our Superintendent of Schools. I'm here. I'm also alone. Scott Gross, our Business Administrator. Here and I'm in the SAU office and Denise is next door. Thank you. Steve Borchette, our IT Administrator. I'm here and I think I'm the only one on this side of the high school. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Jennifer Doloff, our SPED director. Here and alone. MC Barry, our assistant and superintendent. I'm here and I'm alone. And Denise Morin, our administrative assistant. Here and alone. Thank you, everybody. So now we will do the pledge. Mm -hmm. Scott, do you have our flag? All right, if everybody could rise and say the pledge with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, of America. And, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <laughs> all right, well, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, the first thing on our agenda is to approve April 6, 2020 board meeting minutes. I'll move it. Okay, Alan. This is Ellen. Okay, do I have a second? Why can't I see everyone? Seconded. 
Second it by Tim. Did anybody see anything? Any questions, comments? Look okay. good to me. All right, seeing none. Again, I have to do roll call. So when I call your name, just give me your vote. Dan? Aye. Ellen? Aye. Tim? Aye. Susanna? Aye. Janelle? Aye. Ginny? Aye. Retta? Aye. And Heather, aye. We passed unanimously, Denise. Thank you. The second uh, part is all of you should have received the February 2020 deliberative session minutes. It's just for your review on your time. Unless you see something that is clearly wrong, let us know. Ellen? Yeah, page five. Okay. I think it's the seventh line up. Um, holding that down, hold on. Is it a major? Because this is already- Yes, it's a major. It's a date, a date that I think is wrong. Okay. Where'd it go? Um, oh, there it is. Yeah, it's page five, seventh line up. The end of that, the seventh line, it starts with of 2020 and complete okay. construction prior to the first day of school in, and it says 2021. I'm pretty sure we wanted 2020. Okay. Can you repeat that? Um, the warrant article gives you two years on that to spend the money. I'm not sure if that had anything to do with it, Ellen. But no. well, this says construction prior to the first day of school on. Okay, I hear you. It's okay. 2020, right? Yep. That's the only thing I saw. All right, Denise, did you get that? We'll have to check into that because it's already been given to the DRA. All right. Um, so, Denise, do you? We have that written down. We can check into. I think she's saying yes. She said yes. Okay. All right. So we'll move on to correspondence. So this evening we have um, a couple of different pieces of correspondence to share with the board. First, we received a letter um, from David Ross. David is the administrator of the Hillsborough County Nursing Home. And uh, he just sent a letter thanking us for a, um, a donation that we made of uh, gloves for his staff when they couldn't locate personal protective equipment. The second, if we want to go on to the next one, Scott. I don't have the second one. Okay, the second one is a letter that was sent to Senator Hassan, and it was um, encouraging the federal delegation to consider um, some leniency with respect to special education requirements. All board members are likely aware that special education has um, very strict timelines for compliance, and given the unique nature of our school closure at this point, um, the state is asking for some flexibility. And there's a recommendation to Secretary DeVos to allow um, states to have some flexibility. So that's the second piece. Um, third, and by the way, all board members should have received these in your packets. So you would have uh, received these letters. Third one is um, a fun drive that um, the Maple Lab PFT which is our parent um, organization, is hosting a fund drive for the Goffstown Network. And um, it's, it's kind of unique that it's not actually a, a drop off type thing. It's a purchase through, um, I think it was uh, Walmart and Amazon, if I remember correctly. So certainly- on you, It's on the screen. Oh, certainly there's um, a tremendous amount of need for the Goffstown Network. So anything that our citizens can do um, to help with that is very much appreciated. Um, Heather, if I may, it says there's a drop off at 15 Pastor Drive in Goffstown. I believe that is the PFT president's home address. address. Yeah. And, that, and that's off Tibbetts Hill Road, which is the road that Mountain View is on off of. So. So, um, in the last piece, Scott, can you speak to, um, there's a letter to the Goffstown, on behalf of the Goffstown Planning Board that is notifying abutters of the Glen Lake project. So, many months ago, before the, before the warrant article was voted by the citizens of Goffstown, uh, Mr. Gross, myself, Mr. Loring, um, our engineer, Dan Tatum from Stantec Engineering, 
we all went to what's called the TRC, which is the technical review committee that the town has um, for projects considered. So um, Scott, can you speak to this? So after we went to the TRC committee, this is the next step going to the planning board. Yeah, so the, the school board was represented by myself and Dan Tatum a couple of weeks ago for a, more or less a conceptual. And then this Thursday, there will be a, a review, a site plan review for the, the modular classroom addition at Glen Lake. Uh, Dan Tatum is our is an engineer from Stantec. And this is an opportunity uh, for uh, anyone in the public, a butters to comment on the project. So that'll be at seven o'clock. Um, and again, this is going to be a a virtual meeting as well. So it'll be on live streamed on GTV and the public will have the opportunity to either go to town hall to make a comment. Um, but if they do do that, they have to um, fill out a form uh, and or they can do it uh, via telephone call. So all the abutters have been uh, noticed. And again, this is more or less a, a courtesy review that municipalities conduct uh, for the planning board and for obviously abutters. And uh, so, one... Thank you, Scott. And one last piece, Heather. Um, all school board members should have received an email from a student at Goffstown High School named Alexa Skinner. Um, I will address Alexa's um, email and the concerns that she's raised during my superintendent's report. But board members should have received um, her email as well. Right. That just came through this evening. Yeah, it just came through this afternoon. If it would have been um, earlier, we could have um, sent it out with the packet. Okay. And just for good um, compliance with cybersecurity, I did not open it. So if anybody has it and, and you have it up for the screen to share with us, that would be good because I'm not opening anything that was not requested. That's cybersecurity goodness. Okay. All right. Well, we can let Brian read it because I know it just I, came through like 5.30 on 9. I'll just speak to it. Um, it's essentially a petition and then it was 20 pages of signatures, or maybe even more, I'll, but I'll speak to it during my superintendent's report. All right, so is that all for correspondence, Brian? Yes. Okay, thank you. So, accommodations, good news, anybody? Okay, seeing none, moving on to public comment. I don't see anybody in the lobby, so moving on to finance discussion. Scott, that's you. Sure, I'm gonna share my desktop and um, and Dan, do you want me to cover this? Or do you want me yeah. to? Yes, please. Okay, so um, you have a total manifest before you this evening of $1,478,891.37. Payroll taxes and benefits uh, equal $1,163,948.76. Uh, for special ed activity, uh, constellations, uh, 12,700 and change. That was multiple students in the month of March. Core vo vocational, uh, about $10,500, also multiple students in the month of March. And uh, I'm not sure if this was special ed or not. It might, it might not have been. Uh, Granite State Child, there was a workshop in terms of recognizing abuse. It was grant funded, a little over 5,100. I don't think that was special ed, so my apologies there. Um, God, I can speak to that. That yep. was the workshop that we did, No Intel. No Intel. So right. that was um, a workshop that we did for all of our staff. And we also offered um, paraprofessionals. That was a teacher workshop day. We paid paraprofessionals to attend as well. And um, that was recognizing um, everyone's res uh, responsibility with respect to being a mandatory reporter for abuse and neglect in the state of New Hampshire. All right, and now if you look at the general expenses, the first one is to Shiavi for a little over $130,000. That was a down payment on the Glen Lake modular classroom. Uh, Dead River, $8,700 and change for propane. The next couple you're gonna see, Gov Connection and WEI. The first is Gov Connection, almost $51,000. That was for uh, Chromebooks and um, uh, below that, WEI, this was a portion of our server virtualization project, software, and some implementation costs. Uh, Brian's, um, $13,000. That was for uh, uniforms, scorebooks, helmets, et cetera. Keep in mind that this was ordered in, uh, in January, February, um, prior to the cancellation of the spring sports season, but jerseys were ordered in advance of that. 
budget, budget document, a little over 8,000. That is uh, for our copier contract, that's quarterly, and Amazon around $5,800 for supplies. So uh, all in all, um, I would need a motion to approve the manifest in the amount of $1,478,891.37. Mm -hmm. I would move make by Dan. Second by Ellen. Okay. Any other questions for the manifest? Uh, I, okay. I have one, Heather. Sure, um, go ahead, Ellen. How much total have we spent on the additional Chromebooks and all we've needed to do as a result of the um, remote learning so, so far? far uh, if you look at the IT costs, it's it's around 200, and it's 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 climbing every day. Yeah. Um, but it's going to end up being probably 250 thousand dollars. Wow. Okay. Thank you. And, and I say that of that, um, little, about a hundred, and Steve is is on the phone on the call as well. We have a uh, server work which was considerable. Um, but we have purchased uh, a, a lot of a lot of Chromebooks. Licenses are needed, et cetera. Scott, if I can add to that, please. Uh, board members should also know that there's a budget committee meeting tomorrow, and Mr. Gross will be providing an overview of the additional expenses um, that we've incurred as a result of COVID-19 to the budget committee as well. And, and just, I, I wasn't going to go there right now, but Ellen, I think it was a good point that you made is that I am capturing, um, when I say the word savings, uh, we're repurposing. So in monies like uh, funds for such as a teacher substitute line, um, I believe we were close to over $100,000 that we've transferred out of that line um, to, to, for some of these costs. So um, it's not, we're just repurposing a lot of our monies. Uh, there won't be any uh, transportation for co-curriculars in the spring those types of things. So we are able to shift things around to absorb a lot of that. All right. Uh, Heather, will we be able to absorb all of it due to those various kinds of savings? And I'll speak to that a little bit later when I talk about the fund balance. Okay. All uh, right. The... So I have a motion. I have a second. Is there any other questions for Scott on the manifest? All right. Seeing none, I'm going to do a roll call. When I call your name, please give me your vote. Dan? Aye. Ellen? Aye. Tim? Aye. Susanna? Aye. Janelle? Aye. Ginny? Aye. Retta? Aye. Heather? Aye. We're unanimous, Denise. Thank you. All right, Scott, down to budget transfers. I don't have any budget transfers for this particular school board meeting, but you will have them for the next as uh, there's additional things that are that are going on. Okay. Um, I do have the next is a oil bid waiver request. I mentioned this at the full SAU board meeting. Uh, in light of the current uh, economic conditions, oil is at historically low levels. And rather than try to procure or put out to bid in August for our oil, we don't use a ton of oil in, in the Goffstown School District. Um, but I would like to uh, enter into an agreement with Dead River, which is our current provider. And right now, the rate is a dollar eighty four a gallon. We're currently paying two dollars and seventeen cents a gallon. So uh, I would request a um, a motion to uh, waive the oil bid process and to allow the business administrator to enter into a oil bid contract with Dead River for the 2020-2021 school year. Okay, thank you, Scott. Tim, I saw your hand. Are you making a motion or you have a question? Um, I just had a question, Scott. When okay. we had the meeting last week, it was a buck 84. Oil has since gone negative. Are you going to ask them for another quote? Yes, it'll it'll get refreshed. The last time I spoke with him, it was a dollar 84. So if it's a lower price before we lock in, then we'll go with, with the lower price. Okay, perfect. I will make that motion. Okay, thank you, Tim. Do I have a second? Oh, Ellen, you have a question? No, I'm seconding and then I have a question. Okay. All right. So Ellen seconds. Any other questions other than Ellen? Okay, go ahead, Ellen. My question is, why couldn't we go to bid now? Um, I don't know if the other oil providers would uh, have a allow to do that. Um, I reached out to our current 
oil provider. Um, we have had Dead River for quite a long time. They're very reliable and uh, we just don't procure a lot of oil. So I don't think yeah, it would Scott, really be worthwhile. Scott, can I, can I speak to yeah. that? The only oil that we burn at this point in time in the Goffstown School District is at the high school. We have a dual fuel heating platform at Goffstown High School where we have four boilers that can burn either propane or number two heating fuel. Um, Maple Ave, up until we did the propane project, was the only school that was still on oil, um, but that school has since been converted to propane. So we, we don't buy very much oil. Uh, we do like to keep the tanks filled because when the weather is really cold, uh, propane sometimes has an issue with condensing and we don't get as efficient a burn as we do with number two heating oil. So it, in, uh, if we were actually to talk numbers, Scott, I mean, it's probably less than uh, 5,000 gallons. Um, yeah. A year. Yeah. The other thing I would like to point out to board members and for folks who might be watching on television is that we purchase also with the town of Goffstown as well. And they do burn oil in, in many of their facilities. And I spoke with the town administrator uh, and, and, and the, the chairman of the select board about it. So they all were in agreement that it would be a good opportunity to, to, to uh, lock in on a much lower price. So uh, I spoke to Derek Horn and, and um, Collis Adams about it as well last week. Thank you. All right, thank you, Scott. All right, so we have a motion on the table. I have a second. Are there any other questions for Scott? Okay, seeing none, I'm gonna take a roll call. Dan? Aye. Ellen? Aye. Tim? Aye. Susanna? Aye. Janelle? Aye. Ginny? Aye. Retta? Aye. And Heather? Aye. We're unanimous, Denise. Thank you. All right, Scott, moving on to preschool tuition refund. All right. Um, I had a conversation with uh, Kathy Stoyle, who's on our call, as well as uh, superintendent about the notion of um, refunding preschool tuition for three months, April, May, and June for our role model three and four year olds. Um, a lot of, of those students are role models because they're looking for the, so, the interaction, the face-to-face -face interaction. And uh, there were some parents who questioned whether or not um, that was really being met in the remote learning uh, capacity. There are, and Kathy can speak to it, we are still uh, doing remote learning with that cohort of students, uh, but we also felt that it would be a good faith gesture to, to refund three months of those, um, those tuition payments. The total refund would be about uh, a little over $10,000, and um, it is not gonna have a massive impact in terms of our, of our revenue stream. So, um, Kathy, I don't know if you want to speak to it, but we thought it would be a good faith gesture to do that. Yeah, I, I agree. It was um, uh, not the the product that they were paying for, and to um, and to continue charging that just didn't feel right. At the same time, blocking them out completely didn't feel right. There is they do have access to the things that are being posted anyway for um, for the class. So. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Scott. Is there any questions? Because I know Scott will need a motion uh, to make this happen. Does anybody have any questions? Any comments? Ellen? I move that we allow the waiver. Tuition. Thank you, Ellen. Do I have a second? Second by Janelle O'Brien. Okay, second by Janelle. Any other questions, comments? Okay, seeing none, I'm gonna do a roll call. Dan? Aye. Ellen? Aye. Tim? Aye. Susanna? Aye. Janelle? Aye. Ginny? Aye. Retta? Aye. And Heather? Aye. We're unanimous. Thank you, Denise. Thank you, Scott and Kathy. Okay, Scott, moving on to first food service meals for kids during remote learning. Sure, I'm gonna share my desktop for a quick second. You're gonna see a brochure that uh, Megan had had sent out, it went on social media, and this is for free meals for children in both Goffstown and New Boston, 18 years or younger. And essentially it provides five breakfasts and five lunches, again, during what would ordinarily be provided. Um, the nice thing about this is that there is a waiver 
um, from the from the federal government, which allows, regardless of whether or not you're free or reduced, students who wish to procure these meals can pick them up. Uh, Megan is using um, an app to uh, get orders. And for those who don't have any type of a smartphone or computer, you can also make a phone call. And I am pleased to report that today, Megan uh, distributed 175 of these meals. Um, so we expect that number to rise. Um, we have been partnering with the, uh, the Food Network in Goffstown, and they've been just truly outstanding. I can't thank folks like Diane Macon enough uh, for doing what she's doing and all the volunteers uh, at the Food Network. Uh, they are providing bags of food for needy families in the local area, and this is supplementing that um, you know, what, what we're doing there. Jerry St. Chalet, a principal at Bartlett, has also been very active in terms of handing out uh, these types of um, meat, uh, food food packages. So it's just something that I know, um, you know, Megan has been passionate about from the get-go. As we shared with you, initially we only had, we we've been doing surveys and we only had 15 families express a need um, for, uh, for food assistance. Um, and now what we did in terms of opening this up, in terms of uh, meals for kids, regardless of of income level, we're seeing 175, I think is a very nice number. Megan expects that number to, uh, to increase. Um, all of the meals that we provide, and so the, not only it's the food, but the labor is reimbursable through the federal government. Um, so that's also something that is, that is pretty nice. So Megan's staff is coming in um, uh, two to three days a week to prep for these meals. Um, so I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. And, and I'll continue to let you know the numbers as they um, as they evolve. Any questions great. on that? Thank you, Scott. Yeah, that's a great program. Does anybody have any questions? No? Okay. All right, Scott, moving on to fun balance discussion. Sure. So, you know, this is something that, you know, Ellen had raised earlier and, you know, here we are, we're in about the middle of April, and this is the time that I start to look at our fun balance. This, this year was a lot more challenging, not a whole lot of history that we can go back on. Um, it really, the roadmap looked completely different because monies were kind of uh, going in a whole lot of different directions. As I mentioned before, um, I had to factor in about $250,000 of IT related costs. Uh, these are um, server, largely related to server upgrades, both our primary and our backup servers. Um, simply put, our servers were already in need of replacement, and with all of the extra capacity on our system, uh, it really prompted us to take action quicker. Um, the other thing is that we had to purchase a considerable amount of Chromebooks for students that did not have technology in their homes, and that number has also uh, increased as the weeks go by. Um, we've seen a little bit of a push recently as we've gone from uh, a one-month remote learning to now end of school year, we're getting more requests from families that they know that it's a prolonged um, type situation and, and they need additional resources. So uh, with that, we are procuring uh, 50 more uh, Chromebooks to meet, to meet that demand. So Alan, that's the IT portion is about, you know, the, about $250,000. Um, we're also have, I mentioned food service before. So as we continue with, uh, we're providing these meals. So we're gonna see a little bit offset there in terms of revenues from the federal government. But while we continue to pay our food service workers, despite the fact that we're not um, incurring as much food costs, um, we are still having to pay on the labor side of things. And uh, Megan is projecting, we're, we're looking at two, 230 to $250,000 of a shortfall there. So I've kind of programmed that into our fund balance, uh, our equation as well. Uh, so when we talk about where are we saving, you know, some money. So we are saving uh, money, as I mentioned before, the obvious one is a teacher substitute line. Um, when we look at co-curriculars, whether it be transportation uh, to those sporting events, uh, spring athletic stipends will be another savings. Um, there are savings in supply lines. We're not, we don't, we're not in school. Um, we'll see a very, we'll see a modest decrease in our electricity. Uh, so I, th I feel pretty good that we're going to hit the target of what I set when we established our budget and went through our public hearing process. 
I had projected about a $1.4 million fund balance. And I think we'll be right around there. And that is including all the things that I, that I mentioned. Um, so at this point, I think that the board should not worry in terms of what are we going to do? Um, that's not, I'm not giving license to go cr crazy on, on spending, but you know, Steve has been very challenged in terms of what he's had to procure. Um, his folks are working incredibly hard uh, in getting all this equipment, um, not only provision, but you know, you have to support it all. And uh, those IT folks, they, they deserve, deserve, deserve a ton of credit. So with that, um, I'm going to know more board members. I will know more in May um, as we get one more month under our belt. But um, so you might be in a position later on in May um, if there are other types of needs that, that we might need to take care of. So I will tell you one need that I think we're going to do in the short run. And Brian, I think you mentioned it at our last meeting is what's called soft phone technology. And we're going to push this out like sooner rather than later. Uh, what a soft phone is, it essentially allows um, a user to have their laptop as their as their telephone. And it's and it functions the same way as if they were to call the school. We're running into problems um, whereby uh, our staff is using cell phones or landlines. Students uh, may not know what that number is. They don't answer the phone and they have to call back. Um, so the soft phone technology will allow us to really be much more effective in how we um, communicate with our students and amongst each other. Um, and it allows that technology be technology in terms of the voice communication to be more or less portable. Um, that applies not just to our teachers and our paras, but also to any admin assistants who might be working remotely. So it's something uh, that we're going to push forward with uh, in the next couple of weeks because it's desperately needed. Any questions? Scott, yeah. Scott, Scott, if I can just add to that. Um, once we purchase this, it's actually a software product. It's a license, we, yeah. We, we own it for life. So it's not like it's a, a reoccurring cost. There isn't a, a yearly subscription or anything of that nature. Once we make this purchase, it would allow us to have this technology uh, moving forward. Correct, Mr. Bourget? That is correct. It's a license upgrade on our existing phone system. All right, so I think um, as we as we go through the next couple of weeks, we are doing things that we're pretty much forced to do in terms of operating in this remote learning environment. But I, I want you to know that um, there is, I guess, offsetting savings in other budget lines that will help that will help cover that. And I feel pretty good that um, we'll reach an endpoint at the end of the fiscal year where we'll hit our targets, if not do better than some of our targets. So you'll have options. All right. All right. Thank you, Scott. Ellen, I saw you had a hand up. Did you have a question? <laughs> yes, thank you, Heather. You're welcome. Scott, Scott reminded me about something. Um, yes, this is going on now to the end of the school year. And I know we as a district have various kinds of, um, I'm going to use the term waiver, but I don't know if that's correct, um, for our special needs students and the supports and services they would be getting if they were in school. Um, that they may or may not be receiving now that they're staying home. Um, if a parent can obtain uh, that service on their own, uh, whether it's academic or social emotional or speech language or whatever, uh, aid support for academics, um, is, is the district, uh, uh, could the district at all refund those parents if they yes, can? Yes prove that that you know child's being addressed by a, a certified individual to help them so i'm going to turn that over to, to to jennifer who's our our special ed director but we have had discussions i believe for this compensatory type services where and i'll turn it over to jennifer but we may be encumbering funds for that purpose yeah so we're, we're trying to use the term makeup services but um currently we are fully staffed um so we're making every effort as Brian said, the federal government's given some guidance in the state. There's additional guidance coming out probably within the next 15 days or so. But right now we're expected to make every reasonable effort um, to provide faith to students with flexibility. Um, so at this point, we, you know, we're doing everything we can to connect with students and make sure they're receiving the services as outlined in their IEPs. Once we get to the point where we return to school and we all get together and determine whether or not 
the student hasn't made progress or regressed, that's when we'll talk about those other things. Um, does that make sense? That I'm concerned that that's just too late. I'd hate to see these kids falling back if they're not having the power support, let's say. But they um, are having, um, we are providing services. I will tell you that in conversations with Jennifer, um, even in our out of district placements, those they're, they're providing those level of services. They're doing, um, you know, meetings. Now, um, I understand in, term, in terms of like from an OT type of perspective, it, it, that's a little bit of a different story, but um, I, I believe that for the, for the greatest extent, we are providing services. So um, folks, parents have been calling me if they're not feeling like they're receiving the services they need. This has been a big challenge. These students have a hard time face-to-face, -face, many of them. So going online is certainly a challenge, um, but we're, we, are, we do have staff. We're assigning one-to-one -one paras. Um, we're putting teams together. So if, if any parent that's reached out, you know, we've, we've done our best to address that. So um, certainly if we find after a few weeks, some students are missing units, we're going to address that and make those up. All right. Thank you. And Ellen, further on in the agenda, we are going to have a presentation from all our administrators on remote learning. So I'm sure um, Jen will have more information. I do get down. concerned because it's going to go on for the rest of the year. And I'm concerned for all the children and they'll all be in the same boat, but uh, just how much progress are they actually making? Right. So I guess we're all have that concern, but Absolutely. okay, thank you. Thank you, Ellen. Tim, I saw a hand up. Did you have a question or? Tim? Uh, for Scott, sorry, it was more for Scott. I think uh, Talbot just texted me. He said that he's in the waiting room. I did. I, I I did let him in, but then it started spinning on my end. So I know he was ha he was having issues, um, but I I did have him join, and I'll I'll let I'll text him back. I've been texting with him myself. So okay, all right. Thanks, Tim. Sure all right. So Scott, are you done with the fund balance discussion? Yes, I am. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Moving on to P and C committee decision. I'm assuming that's you, Retta. Yes. Um, so PNC hasn't met since Mar uh, March 2nd. Uh, we had anticipated meeting in the beginning of April, but we haven't. Um, and there's a number of items I just want to bring to the attention of the board. Um, first of all, this is uh, National Volunteer Appreciation Week, and usually we do something on behalf of all of the volunteers. Um, unfortunately, we haven't had the time to plan, so we, we will be talking about that um, later, but I did just want to acknowledge, um, you know, as we speak, volunteers are continuing to uh, support our school system. So, uh, you know, hopefully we can recognize this in a little more formal way when the committee gets together. Uh, the other item is, you um, Teacher Appreciation Week, which is coming up the beginning of May and in the same situation. So I just want to let the board know that we are thinking about this, you know, both the, you know, teachers and volunteers, you know, the is what makes our school system run. So um, we haven't forgotten about it and uh, we, we will uh, do something a little more formal. As you know, in the past, we typically do breakfasts. Um, at all of the schools, and obviously that isn't going to happen. So we will we will find a way to to um, show our appreciation. The other item um, is the retreat. We we haven't talked about it. Um, it it'll likely be that we're postponing the retreat, but we'll have more information about that. I don't think it's reasonable to think that we'll be able to meet in June. So um, it probably more than ever this this particular retreat will be important as we look forward to the next year. Um, and then also we'll be looking at scholarships um, at our next meeting. So we are scheduled to meet the week, um, the first week of May, um, May, May 4th, I believe it is. So I just didn't, you know, if anyone has any input or feedback or anything that um, they'd like us to address, but we'll be looking at all of those items. Great, thank you, Retta. Ellen, I saw your hand up. He answered my question, thank oh, you. Perfect, all right, so is that it, Retta? For PNC? Yes. Okay, perfect. All right, moving on to superintendent report, Brian. Okay, um, <clears throat> I'd like to begin by just uh, saying it's nice to see everyone. I appreciate all the administrators being on the, on the Zoom call this evening, and I hope that um, everyone will appreciate their presentation in just a little bit. 
just a few things um, to share with respect to um, COVID-19. Uh, Governor Sununu has closed all schools for the year. So that uh, official declaration came out last Thursday. We had a planning meeting this morning where all the administrators are thinking about and planning for our extended school year program. The board will recall that special education students, many of them require services over the summer. And we had really hoped that that was going to be in our schools with our kids. And it's looking increasingly um, less likely that that's gonna be the case. So we've done kind of a parallel planning model where teachers and administrators are planning for the possibility that we could be in school, but um, also planning for the possibility that we could continue to be in a remote environment. So I did want the board to know uh, we're working on that. At the SAU board meeting last week, I shared criteria that I would expect to see in order to reopen safely. Um, I have put that information on the website. Anyone who is interested in reviewing that, I would just share that I am certainly not a public health official and we've been looking for guidance from our federal and state partners um, from public health. But at this point, we have not seen any criteria. So I did um, put to, oh, Mr. Gross is gonna share, it's front and center on the SAU 19 website. Thank you, Scott. Um, we continue to conduct digital walkthroughs and this has been a, a really um, meaningful process for me. I know that Mrs. Barry and I have very much enjoyed um, having the opportunity to visit many classrooms and see the great things that our teachers are doing. And uh, we just continue to be so appreciative and so impressed. We're working on developing uh, what we're calling universal expectations for connected learning. So we have uh, pretty clear expectations of what we expect to see instructionally in our traditional brick and mortar classrooms. And we're now developing similar criteria of what we expect to see in our remote classrooms. So that's something that um, is in draft form and we're continuing to work on. I've had a couple of inquiries with respect to foreign exchange students that I wanted to bring to the board's attention. And uh, Heather, I would recommend that we put this on our next agenda under new business because um, some of the provisions we have our foreign exchange students policy, which is JFABB. -B. So anyone who is so inclined to read the policy and under normal circumstances, we're pretty good with our process. Mrs. Lewis, who's our school counseling coordinator, oversees this program. And we, um, at this point, I think we need to have some further conversations. Um, you know, most of the kids that we get are, are gonna be coming from countries that could, well, certainly every country at this point is less impacted than the United States of America. So I, I guess if I'm from, uh, Denmark or Norway or, or somewhere else in the world, I might wonder why in the world I would ever want to send my kid to the United States of America and have them fly into um, either New York or Boston. But be that as it may, I would recommend that we take up a discussion around foreign exchange students in a little greater depth, perhaps at our next meeting. Um, I mentioned earlier during um, conversations about correspondence that um, there's a high school senior who has done a survey. And I think she had over 600, the last, um, the email she sent me said she had, I think I saw 617 signatures. And essentially the majority of them are seniors. Some of them are underclassmen, some are, are families or friends. But essentially what the kids are asking for is they're asking for a graduation face-to-face, -face, in person. They're, they're uh, specifically not requesting any kind of a Zoom type graduation or something of that nature. So I did wanna um, acknowledge Alexa Skinner who had done that. And I, I guess I would share, um, I want that too. So I, I want everyone to recognize that we all want that. Um, however, we also need to balance the need for public safety. So I think we're gonna have a number of celebrations and ritual. High school graduation is always my favorite event of the year, and I always look forward to it, but we just need to recognize at this point that until the, the governor changes the group sizes that are allowed to meet in public, we're gonna have a lot of restrictions. And we also have to be very, very careful that we don't have any of our families that are exposed to COVID-19. We'd hate to have a, 
a wonderful celebration and have someone um, get sick or get um, the virus transmitted to them. So everything, and we talked about this at the SAU meeting last week, but everything from high school graduation down to kindergarten promotion and everything in between is impacted. And I, I think what we're going to have to do is continue to, um, I will tell um, the students that we are committed if we're able to hold a high school graduation ceremony in the month of July or August, um, or even a little later, if that's what it ended up being, that we're committed to doing that. I also think that there are some examples of socially distant graduations that are starting to come up. Everything from um, having something at a drive-in uh, movie theater, I think I saw on CNN the other day, to there's a lot of innovative things. For example, we could rent the Verizon, um, or formerly known as the Verizon, I, get, I always forget the name, the SNU Arena in Manchester, and we could have people sitting um, you know, 10 feet apart because we would never fill that venue. So I think that there are a lot of ways that we could think about it. I know the kids are disappointed. Um, it's important to me. It's important to all of us. And we, we certainly recognize we're very empathetic to the seniors. And this stinks for them. It, it really does. But I think we're, we're going to have to be at a point, folks, where we're going to have to think about um, imperfect closure versus waiting and perhaps not being able to have something until it could be considerably later. So I did want to share that with the board and to let you know that there are a lot of people talking about this. We're very sympathetic to them, but we have to make sure we do things safely. So while I respect um, the students and I applaud their efforts at um, taking an active role in terms of civics, I, I, I really appreciate that. I just want to make sure everyone has to know we have to keep everyone safe. So we've got to balance that need for these um, rites, passages, and rituals, and recognize that an imperfect closure may unfortunately be the reality. But we're not giving up on graduation or the prom or eighth grade promotion or anything else that we do at the end of the year. But we do um, need to balance those um, events with public health. So with Heather. that, Heather, um, that's all I have. Heather? Right, thank you, Brian. Yes. Hang on one second, Dan. Ellen, I saw her hand up. Ellen, did you have a question? Um, my only thought, I've saw this posted on Facebook a few times. Um, the idea of using the Santa or Easter Bunny routes that they use when they do those drive arounds with the fire department and do that with a parade of cars and then drive through the high school parking lot and receive their diplomas. I don't know if that's even at all possible, but just to do something special for yeah, these El kids. Ellen, we, we've had a lot of internal conversations about different creative options. I think, again, we're not, we're not ready to give up on having a traditional um, graduation, but we certainly recognize the limitations given the restrictions that are placed on us with group sizes per Governor Sununer's declaration. So um, whether it's a parade, or it's something else, we're, we're definitely open to that. But the, the message loud and clear from these graduating seniors is they really want the traditional in-person um, graduation. We do know, of course, that we would be limited in having this uh, ceremony at St. Anselm College, but we're open to other options, other ideas, depending upon when it could be. All right, thank you, Brian. Okay, Dan, thank you. You had a question? It more is to process. I'm not knowing the legal process of actually graduating. If we never get a chance to physically have something where a diploma is handed, how is the legal process of graduation for entrance into college occur? When, when does that occur? When the credits are done? When does the paperwork move? So the, and I'll let Mrs. McCann speak to this if she's so inclined, but when, whether they attend graduation or not, they, if they've completed the course requirements and their transcripts indicate that they are graduated. 
Yeah, the legal document is the transcript. It's not a diploma. The diploma and the graduation ceremony are considered just that, ceremonial. They're, they're rituals, rites of passage, but they are not uh, part of completing. And it ultimately is the transcript that is the only legal document. Thank you. All right, thank you. So is that it, Brian, for your update? Yes, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. All right, so moving on to old business, we have a Glen Lake update. Who is speaking to that? I can speak to that, that's Scott. Okay, Scott go ahead. Um, so as I said before, there is a planning board um, meeting on Thursday at seven o'clock. And again, that's just a, a review uh, in that respect. In terms of work that has been done, you saw today uh, that we paid for the down payment on the portable classroom itself. Um, excavation work is continuing, and I believe we're at a point uh, where we're close to excavating for footings, which would be that we're probably a couple of weeks away from, uh, from pouring concrete for footings and slabs. Um, just, uh, John Neville excavating has done a fantastic job. I think uh, some photos have been shared with respect to all the work being done over there. So um, we're keeping our fingers crossed that um, we don't have any delays in terms of the actual construction of the portable classroom itself. But uh, if that's the case, things are moving nicely. And I think we have to take a look back at some of the things that we did do. So we, we did employ uh, Stantec engineering early on in the process. We put the bid documents out prior to the Warren article. All those things allowed us to really hit the ground running. Um, and obviously, it doesn't it doesn't hurt matters when there's no school in session and you can move, you know, five thousand yards of material. So um, so far, so good. And I think you know, again, uh, we should be in a good position. Uh, again, albeit no delays on the actual construction of the portable classroom itself to have it up and running. Uh, for the beginning of the school year in the fall. Perfect, thank you, Scott. Brian, do you have anything to add to it? No? No, just that um, so far it looks really good. And as always, uh, John Neville is doing a spectacular job. So we've been very pleased. Um, I would say I'm a little concerned. I think Mr. Gross probably has maybe a little, a little less concern than I have, but the building is being manufactured up in Maine, in uh, Oxford, Maine. I guess my only concern is just the ability for them to get the building built in time for us to be able to make this project come to completion, including the connector building. So we've talked about how there's going to be the modular classroom, but then we're gonna connect to the brick and mortar structure at Glen Lake. We're just, I wanna make sure that we're pushing as hard as we can so that there's no uh, delay in the fall. And I, I should also point out that you know, when we talk about our, our, our tax dollars staying local, I mean, obviously Neville Excavating is a local company, um, On Point Concrete, which is the uh, concrete company that is also locally owned uh, by a uh, Lee Sperry and, and his family. And, and so that's just a good thing that, you know, we're keeping these dollars uh, local. Uh, so all good. Yes, absolutely. Thank you very much. Okay, so moving on to second read policies, we have a few policies that we talked about in March. We looked at them um, again uh, for first reads and now we're doing second reads. So we wanna move these forward. Uh, if anybody has questions, we can take them one at a time, but, and Steve Bourget is here also to answer any questions that have to do with the IT part. So the first policy is GBCD. It's the background investigation, criminal background policy. Do I have a motion to move that forward? I'll move that, thank you. A second? I'll second that, Susanna. Susanna, thank you. Anybody have any questions on this policy? I've only gone through the first few pages. It's not redlined. Is Were there any changes to this? Uh, the board had requested that the changes were shown on the first read and then the second read would be with the way they are the way they're going to be so if you look at your first read package you should have all the changes there right and the first read dan i do have 
um, I do have a copy of the first read and it's talking about different RSAs that needed to be implemented, um, military caregivers, um, basically it was pursuant to different RSAs that needed to be put in to cover everybody for family and medical leave. Or I'm sorry, not family medical, the background investigation. I'm looking at the wrong one. Hang on, I have so many here. The background, so that, yes. MC might have all the answers. Yes, she's that's the true. Yeah, she's the administrator who helps right, keep that all on. She has the things in front of her. Well, what I've got in front of me are what was in Denise's packet from today. Denise, right. these are the same set of policies, if I'm not mistaken, that started at the SAU board yes. with a yes. review. And right. then <clears throat> once they were reviewed, excuse me, at the SAU board, then they were subsequently passed to each one of the districts with Kate providing district specific revisions. So Correct. the same set of documents has already gone to New Boston, and now they are coming before yep. the Goffstown board. Correct. Thank you, Denise. Mm -hmm. All right, so does that suffice, Dan? Yeah, I'm looking for the original ones now, but it shouldn't slow us down. Okay, thank you. So I have a motion and I have a second. Is there any other questions regarding G, B, C, D? Okay, I'm going to take a roll call. Heather? Yes. Excuse me, are you going to also do the regulation? Oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry, Denise. Yes, regulation as well. So, Ellen, can you amend your motion to include the regulation of GBC? Yeah, I move that it's the, the, the policy and the regulation. Okay. And I'll second Donna. that again. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Roll call. Dan? Aye. Ellen? Aye. Tim? Aye. Susanna? Aye. Janelle? Aye. Jared? Aye. Ginny? Aye. Retta? Aye. And Heather? Aye. Denise, we're unanimous. Okay, moving on to the second read policy GCCBC. This is the Family Medical Leave Act. This is Ellen. I move that we approve BCCBC. Okay, thank you. Do I have a second? Second, Janelle O'Brien. Janelle seconds. Any questions on this policy? Okay, seeing none, I'll do a roll call. Dan? Aye. Ellen? Aye. Tim? Aye. Susanna? Aye. Janelle? Aye. Jared? Aye. Ginny? Aye. Retta? Aye. And Heather? Aye. Denise, we're unanimous. Okay, the next one is GDCB. That's other potential leave. Do this I have a motion? Ellen, this is Ellen. I move GDCB as approved. Okay, Janelle thank you, Ellen. Do I have a second? Janelle O'Brien for a second. Janelle seconds. Thank you, Janelle. Any questions? Okay, seeing none, another roll call. Dan? Aye. Ellen? Aye. Tim? Aye. Susanna? Aye. Janelle? Aye. Jared? Aye. Ginny? Aye. <laughs> Retta? Aye. And Heather? Aye. We're unanimous, Denise. Okay, the next one is GBEF. GBEF reg and GBEF one, it's school internet access to staff. Ellen, you have a question on that? No, I'd like to move approval. GBEF, GBEFR, and GBEF dash one. Perfect, thank you. Do I have a second? Seconded. By Tim, anybody have any questions? I don't have a question, Heather, but I do have a comment. I would just like sure. to draw to the board's attention that this will be effective as of July 1st. Okay. Yes, thank you, MC. You're welcome. All right, roll call. Dan. Can I ask a question first? Oh, sure. I'm Please. sorry. I didn't your hand up. I, my hand doesn't work because of my background. Oh, okay. I'm looking at Steve. Is there anything? What? I can't find the original ones, and I do remember... This one and the next one had a few changes to it. 
So one question is, what are the major changes? And number two, does anything in here need us to make it happen earlier because of the atmosphere of remote learning? Um, I don't think there's anything in there that has to happen earlier because of the remote learning piece. Most of the changes to the policies were for compliance with the House Bill 1612 or RSA 18966, which under the emergency order, some of those stricter requirements were waived. Thank you. All right, so any other questions? All right, we're gonna do roll call. Dan? Aye. Ellen? Aye. Tim? Aye. Susanna? Aye. Janelle? Aye. Jared? Aye. Ginny? Ginny, you're muted. Aye. <laughs> Thanks, Ginny. Retta? Aye. And Heather, aye. We're unanimous on that one, Denise. Okay, the last one is JICL and JICL-R, student use of computers, devices, and internet. Dan, go ahead, you had a question? Same question as the previous policy, if possible. Okay. Um, pretty, and pretty much the same answer. Um, there's nothing here that needs to be implemented earlier the bulk of it from the, the change in the existing policy of the first read was a full rewrite of JICL to make it student friendly. Um, but I don't think there's anything specific that has to be implemented prior to July 1 because most of it's targeted for when we're back in the buildings. Thank you. All right, thank you, Dan. Thank you, Steve. So if no other questions, I'll take a roll call. Um, oh, I don't think we have I'm a motion sorry, yet. We didn't have a motion yet. Gosh. <laughs> okay. All right. I need a motion to approve. If I may. Yes, Ellen. This is go Ellen. Ahead. I move that JICL and mm -hmm. JICLR be adopted. Great. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second by Janelle. Second by Janelle. Thank you, Janelle. Okay. We're going to try this again. Roll call. Dan. Aye. Ellen. Aye. Tim. Aye. Susanna. Aye. Janelle. Aye. Jared. Aye. Ginny. Aye. Retta. Aye. And Heather. Aye. We are, are unanimous. Thank you, Denise. Thank you, everybody. That's been a lot of policies coming through. Thank you. All right. The next is um, high school rear stair replacement. Scott, Brian, who's talking to that? Uh, that's going to be me again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my desktop. Um, you'll recall that last year in June, uh, we had off the board had authorized a low bid of $38,850 for the um, two stair stairways uh, at Goffstown High School. Unfortunately, about two weeks or three weeks after accepting that low bid, right before work was going to start, that contractor backed out um, of the project, said he couldn't get it done. Uh, so what we did, is, if you also recall, that, that that project was going to be funded from the Capital Reserve Fund. Uh, Randy uh, met with Morin contract, Contracting Services. Morin has been used on several projects in terms of the, uh, the canopy walkways at Bartlett and Maple Avenue. They do a very good job. And their proposal came in slightly higher. And I want to kind of share that with you. So their proposal came in at 40000 Seven hundred fifty-six dollars, which is you know almost two thousand dollars more than what you had granted approval for. So that's why we're having this conversation. I would need a reauthorization. Um, you'll recall that you authorized granite stairs, and this particular project is kind of like a hybrid. It's a precast product. Um, all of the the treads themselves are two-inch granite, as well as all of the landings are also granite. And the uh, side and the risers are a brick veneer. So uh, essentially, it's it's what you need, what you want. Um, it has galvanized railings. So I think we can get this project done for uh, about two thousand dollars more than what was authorized uh, last year. 
the uh, the one caveat is that um, I've been talking with the town about the possibility of them doing demolition um, of those stairs, and if they can, we'll save four thousand dollars. So I'm in I'm in I'm speaking with DPW about that. Um, they may have the ability to do it, um, but again, I won't know for another probably another week. In the meantime, if you do accept this um, this proposal, again, it would come out of the capital reserve fund, no impact to the taxpayers. Uh, we would then order the uh, the precast systems, and uh, by that time, I'll hear back from DPW whether or not they could do the the demolition work. So, again, that was a uh, forty thousand seven hundred and fifty six dollars. Heather, this is Jared. I'd like to make a motion. Okay, hang on one second, Jared. Uh, Dan had his hand up. Go can ahead, you, Dan. Scott? Can you speak to the switchback system that we had alluded to earlier? for a possible ramp at the furthest stairwell? Um, from what I recall, that was not going to be doable uh, due to the grades. And I think Brian, was, was that, am I correct on that one? It yeah, was not so, possible? So what I remember, Scott, is just given the duration, um, the length where you need to make up the elevation increase, that that ramp, that ramp would end up being too far, Dan, and it would stick out um, to a point that would become kind of a hazard that was with, if I remember correctly, a straight ramp out. Then we were talked about going along the horizontal part of the school and then switching back towards the, the stairs themselves. Yeah, and there yeah, was I, still a great issue uh, with that. I, I thought that, that, would, that it would work, but I think Dan, uh, Morin looked at that, uh, Dan, and he did not think that it was as easy as, as, as I thought it would be. The, the other thing is obviously more stairs, more material, more prep um, increases the cost. Right. The material that Scott had talked about Trex. at yeah. one time was um, was different material and maybe not as permanent as granite, but 20, 30 year material. So, OK, thank you. All right. Thank you, Dan. Ellen, I saw your hand. Did you have a question? I'm mute. Okay. A while back, um, I don't remember what it was, it was a, uh, a suggestion that some different type of material be used that was much less expensive. Yeah, Trex, um, and that's, that's, it's a composite material. Right. Um, it, it is less expensive. However, uh, in terms of winter weather conditions, in terms, you know, and I talked to Don Tabor and our facilities folks about this, um, it's, it can be a little slippery in terms of the, the winter weather. So that's the other, they had, they had a little bit of a downside they, in terms of the durability of it. They felt that the, this precast system in terms of the granite, the two inch granite risers, um, I'm sorry, the treads and uh, the landings would be a more long-term sustainable type product for what we've got. Is this is a CIP item? No, it's uh, well, uh, I'm trying to remember if it's CIP, but it was, it was, uh, we had no, earmarked it last no, year for capital reserve CIP. fund. You said it comes out of the CRF? Yeah, it's this an was existing previously a point of order. This was previously reported on the motion that it was a CIP item. That's why it was from the CRM last year. We'd have to pull that up. I don't recall that this is in CIP, Jared. It certainly would be an existing capital asset. And you can always uh, look at the meeting minutes from the prior year. Okay, so Jerry, did you want to make a motion to move this forward or did you have other questions? No, I'd like to make a motion to update our authorization for the rear stairs at um, Goffstown High School to the amount of $40,000, uh, sorry, $40,000. $756 with an updated vendor um, as provided by Scott Gross. Okay, great. Thank you, Jared. Is there a second? I'll go ahead and second that, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Is there any other questions or comments about this? Okay, seeing none, I will do a roll call. Dan? Aye. Ellen? No. Tim? Aye. Susanna? Aye. Janelle? Aye. Jared? Aye. Ginny? Aye. Retta? Aye. 
Heather, aye. We're unanimous. Denise, thank you, Scott. No, we're not unanimous. I voted no. Oh, you said no? I'm sorry, Ellen. I thought you said yes. All right, Denise, did you get that? We have one no. Okay. All right, so the next item is April vacation and other possible time discussion. Um, before we get into this, I just feel like there's some clarification that needs to happen. Um, there was some confusion last week at our SAU board within the board and I think with our community. As you all know, we discussed canceling April break or keeping April break at our last school board meeting. We wanted to give New Boston an opportunity to talk as their board, which was two days later. Uh, and then we would all come together last week at the SAU board and discuss what everybody thought. Um, the SAU board cannot make the final decision whether to keep April break or not. The only thing the SAU board can do is recommend what each individual board does. And I think that's where some of the confusion came with our community. It was recommended by the SAU board to cancel April break. So that's why we are here tonight to discuss it. Now we've discussed it quite a bit. Um, I'm not sure how much more we need to talk about it. We definitely can talk about it, but I, I don't want our waters to get muddy. I just wanna talk about April break at this point. We do after that, we will talk about a potential of a three day weekend. That is a separate thing. I don't want things to get mixed together. Um, so Brian, if you have anything to add to that, I can open up the discussion for the April break. Um, no, I think you you provided a really nice overview of that, Heather. And um, the other piece that I would share is the board received copies of the April vacation survey that Mrs. Morin sent out. Mm -hmm. And um, if if the board was so inclined, we could show that again. I did show that data at the SAU meeting last week, um, but there there appeared to be um, support from the Goffstown board to um, work through April vacation. And I think it looks like there was not support in New Boston. So we'll have to cross that bridge um, on Wednesday night if the Goffstown board um, takes action. Okay, Ellen, I saw your hand up. Did you have a yeah. question? Uh, not a question. I'd like to, to move that uh, the Goffstown board um, uh, go along with what the overwhelming majority of those surveyed and um, our, what I think was a unanimous vote on the Goffstown board when we were meeting last week that we cancel the April break. Okay, so you have a motion to cancel April break. Do Mr. I have Jared, a second? I second? Okay, thank you, Jared. Is there any other questions or comments about April break? Ginny, are you raising your hand? I'm raising my hand. Okay, <laughs> sorry, I wasn't sure. Um, I'm still uncomfortable about the tenor of the SAU meeting and the differences between our board and the New Boston board. Um, I, you know, I, I think, yes, Goffstown does want to cancel um, the break, but I think we need to figure out something so that we don't have this huge discord with New Boston. So, um, you know, I would vote yes for this, but I am very uncomfortable. Um, my piece. No, thank you, Jenny. And we will discuss a plan B after we're done with this motion. So if there's no other questions or comments, oh, Janelle, you have a hand. I just got a question looking forward. So if we do decide to cancel and New Boston decides to not cancel, I know you said that there was more to come after we make our decision, but what would that look like? Brian, so you want to answer that? Yeah. So if if we were in school, there would be a transportation nightmare that would ensue from that. Because we're in a remote learning um, model, we certainly don't have um, disruption or additional weeks of busing or anything of that nature. So what would happen if New Boston decided to um, not take April vacation and Goffstown did is Goffstown would be in school New Boston 7th through 12th graders would be in school. So the New Boston school district would have to pay for an extra week of busing. So that's obviously not the case. Um, I do think that this will be an incredible hardship on families that have 
kids that might be at New Boston Central School and then an older one at the middle school or the high school. I think this is going to be very complicated for families. Um, but I also, I, I don't know what the New Boston board is going to do. You know, they, we shared the survey results. That board has the survey results that um, Ellen is right. Overwhelmingly, everyone um, who responded to the survey, parents, teachers, support staff all supported the notion of working through April vacation, which would get us out of school earlier. Now, um, Heather, if I may just provide a little more information about this. Uh, we talked about this a little bit at the SAU board. Um, there are some school districts that are doing everything they can to get school out as early as they possibly can. Now, I have to tell you, and probably not surprisingly, I do not support that. I do not support the concept of that. And there are some school districts, and I'm not picking on any districts, but uh, Rochester was one of the first ones that came out, and their kids are getting out of school on May 15th. So I, I do have tremendous concerns about school districts that are choosing to shorten their school year by moving to an hours-based calendar, eliminating days, and then essentially hurry up and let kids regress. Um, I have significant concerns about the impact on our special education students, as well as all of our kids, really. So I recognize that for families, if you didn't have to provide support to your children, I recognize that that would be perhaps a good thing for families, but I think not having the structure and the routine of being in a remote learning or a connected learning model, I do think negatively impacts students. Um, if this board wanted to talk about uh, reducing the school year, we could do that. We're, we're ready to talk about that. Um, I would also share that there are some contract issues that we would have with our teachers union, which specifies student contact days. So some school districts might have the flexibility to take a school day or three or four or five school days and then do more professional development or more training for teachers. That is something that we would have to negotiate with the bargaining unit. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Ellen, did you have a question? Uh, yeah, um, Heather, I like how you introduced and brought this subject forward. Um, I agree with J I, this discussion has gone, I think, beyond the motion. Um, probably is better for the next piece of the discussion. I, too, as Ginny, but probably maybe for different reasons, was very disquieted by the discussion last week. Um, and I, I would probably like to address that further later on in the next topic of discussion. But right now it's to cancel the April, April break. break and move the closing up accordingly. Yes. And then we can have the rest of that discussion if we choose to subsequent Correct. as you bring forward. Right. And also just to let you know, I have the survey in my hand and New Boston at a 728 people that were participating in the survey, 543 said to um, cancel April break. So, but like we said, we don't know what New Boston is gonna decide. So we have a motion to cancel April break. We have a second. Dan, you had a question? Just a small comment. Okay. My, my vote is gonna be because I'm elected by Goffstown residents, voters. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Dan. All right, so any other questions, comments? We've talked about April break quite a bit. I just had one more thing, this is Janelle. Sure, go ahead, um, Janelle. <clears throat> I, I know that these are two different motions and I appreciate that and I think it needs to be handled that way 100%. Mm -hmm. However, part of me is concerned about the, um, maybe the way that it, the questions may have led some people to believe like if we do cancel April vacation that we are going to get time off in May. And when I read reread the results today, um, it did look like there was an overwhelming people amount of people who did want, um, you know, more time off in May. And I, the reason why I bring this up in this motion is because Ellen had just said, you know, the closing of school. So I don't, if we're going to have a further discussion about the school calendar, like, I think it's important that we take both things into into consideration, if that makes sense. Um, 
if we're saying that this means that we're getting out on this day in this motion, and then our next motion, we're going to go into, well, that's not really the closing day. We're going to actually add a couple more days. I'm just wondering, I guess, maybe how, like the logistics of that, how does that work and, and how other members might feel about that? Right. Well, that's a good point, Janelle. Um, I'm just trying to keep it very clear because last week so many things got thrown and caused mass confusion. Um, if we cancel April break, the last day of school would be Thursday, June 11th. If we decide to add a three-day weekend, one day would be added to the end of the year. And I don't know if this board wants to do that. Um, it was recommended by the SAU board to at least discuss it. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to keep things separate because last year too many or last week too many things got put together mm -hmm. and we had a lot of uh, upset people um, between board members and the community and I'm trying to keep that separate. So I'd like to, we have a motion for April break to cancel. Let's move that forward. Um, Tim, you had a question? Tim, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say if we could please move it to vote. Yes, absolutely. That's what I'm doing. So um, I appreciate your concern, Janelle, and we hopefully can address it with the next topic. So Dan. Aye. Ellen. Aye. Tim. Aye. Susanna. Aye. Janelle. Aye. Jared. Aye. Ginny. Aye. Retta. Aye. And Heather, aye. So we're unanimous for canceling April break of 2020. Thank you, everybody. I know that was a big uh, discussion. The second part of this is whether we have a three-day weekend. Now, I, Brian will probably speak to this more, but I do want to say that it was put in the survey, but a lot of people felt that if they had a day off, it did not need to be made up at the end of the year. Once they realized that if you take a day off, you have to make it up then they went, no, I don't want a three-day weekend. Can Brian resend this? I had parents con contacting me. Um, I was seeing stuff on Facebook. So the survey with the weekend, long weekend, I would take with a grain of salt. Um, I'm not sure how accurate it is. If we did do a three-day weekend, I would propose just one because we will have Memorial Day. So maybe like the very first weekend in May, have a Monday off. I'm not sure if New Boston is leaning towards that. Um, if they are, I would like to try to compromise with them because we do need to work together with New Boston. Um, and if we did have a three-day weekend, I would request that none of our teachers hand out assignments on Friday. Let's, if we're gonna do it, let everybody take a three-day weekend a break. Our teachers, our staff, our students, our parents, don't give assignments on Friday that's due Tuesday. Um, but I'm open to hear any comments or anything. Brian, do you wanna to add to something before I call on Dan? Um, no, I wouldn't add anything. I think you've captured it well, thank you. All right, thanks, Brian. Go ahead, Dan. May I ask the principals who are with us whether or not they believe the teachers who are doing this would actually take that day off, even though the kids might have a day off, are the teachers gonna have a day off? Good, thank you, Dan. Who would like to answer first? Kim? Yeah, I don't mind going. Um, yeah. And Dan, when we do our presentation, I'll, I have some data as well from surveys I've done of my staff. And what I'm finding is 75% uh, of them are saying already that they are able to fully disconnect on the weekends. So I think that that's good good information and that they are finding time as well during the day to take a little bit of a break for themselves um, and to find some balance. So I, I would say if we had looked at some of these same questions three, four, five weeks ago, we would have had a very different response. But um, the feedback form that I sent out on Friday of this past week is, is showing some really positive and favorable trends. And that's what I'm hearing from staff as well as they are getting to a place where they're in much more of a rhythm, they're much more comfortable with what they're doing. And because they're so connected to their device uh, during, during the weekdays that they're making a very conscious effort to turn off during the weekends. Great, Wendy? thank you, Kim. Yes, Dan, you have something else? I was just going to ask Wendy oh, to Brian, comment. Sorry. 
Yeah, I'm sorry. I just I want I wanted Wendy to chime in. Yeah, definitely, Wendy. Hi, I actually am going to echo exactly what Kim just talked about. I think if you would have asked me this question three weeks ago, I would have had a very different answer than I have for you this evening. But I really feel like our staff is getting into a good rhythm and are having some work-life balance now, where I do think that they are able to unplug on the weekend. Of course, even when we were in the building, we do have those staff members that's just part of who they are and their makeup that do uh, tend to do some work on the weekends. But um, I think everybody's doing a really nice job now of finding that rhythm, taking that time to decompress and to unplug from their device. Thank you, Wendy. I'd like to see if any of our elementary principals have the same things to say, Jerry. Yeah, I feel the same way. I feel like at the very beginning, it was very difficult for teachers and for parents and everyone. It took a, an awful lot of time, like 24 seven to get this up and running. Um, teachers are doing a much better job with the work life balance. And I think it's coming from administration all the way down. And I think they are hitting their stride right now. Great. Thank you, Jerry. Retta, I saw your hand up. Did you have a question? Or a um, statement? Yeah. I guess a statement. I'm I'm wondering if it would be worthwhile to have the presentations first before we go into this conversation because I'd like to hear you know what's happening and and get a little bit more of a background before we talk about what we should be doing because I think there may be a lot of information um, that will be. Okay. Thank you, Retta. Alan, did you have something to say? Yeah, I. First, we'd like to hear from Suzanne before we go any further, but um, I, I have no idea what these presentations are about. It's They're about um, remote learning and how everybody is doing with okay, it. Oh, that's down here under new that's business. The, that was the presentations. Right. That's um, the next item on the agenda. I, I mean, I don't mind. Um, I'd like to hear from Waiting. Suzanne and then possibly if the administration administrators think that hearing about the remote learning um, would help us with this. I'm fine with that. Um, but I do have some other concerns about this entire discussion, actually, and the causes and reasons for it, which I'll express later when we when we talk about it. So I'd like to hear from Suzanne and All then right. find sure. out about if they think that hearing about the remote learning, it will help us in uh, determining whether we think a day, there needs to be a three day weekend someplace in May. Okay, perfect. And I know Ginny has her hand up as well, right, Ginny? Did you have a, did yes, you have I a question? Um, okay. I agree with, I was thinking along the same lines as Retta. Okay. Um, before she said it, I was thinking that if we got, you know, maybe an idea of what everybody's doing, um, that we could make a better decision. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right, Suzanne, um, yes, I know I Ellen wanted you to say something. Sure. I, I agree with um, Kim and Wendy and, and Jerry. I think that uh, one of the things that we provide as administrators is um, support and guidance and um, we give advice like self-care is important, balance is important. Uh, we need you for the long haul. So we need you to take time when, when you need it. So. I think now we are in a good place and um, people are finding time for walks and other things that, that we can do in the spring. So, so okay, that's great, good. thank you. Ellen, you had another question? No, I didn't want to leave Kathy out. Oh. <laughs> thank you, I was about to do the same. <laughs> yes, Kathy, I would have called on her after Suzanne was talking. <laughs> um, no, I agree with what's been said. If you had asked me a few weeks ago, I would have also had a very different answer. Um, but I think uh, groups have really worked together to make some good team strategies, some individual strategies, ways to um, improve what they're doing so that they um, can get what they need to out and still have a, a bit of a work life balance. So, um, so I think, and the other, um, I certainly haven't surveyed uh, the staff, the comp, but the couple of conversations I have had have been a, a greater level of comfort on their part as well um, with not having April vacation. And then just but that at that point, let's just move through and, and, you know, get done, so. Right, perfect, thank you, Kathy. Go ahead, Dan. 
well, at the discretion of the chair, she can move the agenda around. Yes. And if she so chooses, one of the things I'd like to think about by listening to presentations first is whether one day, two days, three days, four days, five days, is it a four day work week um, for several days or several mm -hmm. weeks at the end of the year or just a one time thing. And during the presentation, if the principals can reflect on that, that, that would be great for me. Right, yes, that was definitely gonna be part of their presentation was discussing flex day. Um, that was discussed also at the SAU. So I am fine with letting our principals give the presentation. And then once we're done with that, then we can discuss whether we do a three day or what we're gonna do moving forward. So Brian, I'm not sure how you were planning to start the presentation, but I'm, floor I'm, is happy, yours. To, I'm happy to kick it off, but I did see Mrs. Bermakowitz's hand up. Hand up, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, go Just ahead, wanted Ellen. to add one thing to Dan. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm fine. I like listening to what the principals have to say. Um, the other option is no more additional days off, <laughs> not just one, two, three, or four. Um, but just cancel the break and keep on moving through is an option for us. Right. So, yeah. Well, we're going to see you. what the principals have to say. Thank you, Alan. All right. So, Brian. Yeah. So, um, I, I'd like to begin by thanking our administrators for. Uh, spending their Monday evening with us. It's always nice to have um, all of them be part of this. So Mr. Bourget and Dr. Dolliff, in, as well as um, our principals will speak this evening. Um, I did, I, I mentioned this to Mrs. Barry um, last week and said that I'd like to move forward with compiling a presentation to show members of the school board, as well as interested members of the community exactly what connected learning in a remote environment looks like. So I, I have the, the, um, the benefit of being able to see classrooms, to see the work that the teachers are doing, but we wanted to bring some of that to the school board. And so when we, um, when we started working on this, MC did a great job as she always does and led the group in putting together a very comprehensive um, presentation Given the fact that it's already 8.30, I might ask the administrators to maybe um, speed it up a little bit. I do know that they have 57 slides, so I hope we can try to keep this to about 30 minutes if everyone's uh, patience and tolerance is there. So we will begin with Dr. Dolliff, who will give a quick overview of special education. Mr. Gross, you're going to queue up the presentation, if you would, and uh, Jen, maybe just the highlights, and then yep. I would say all the other administrators. Um, I think that as we get in the cadence and the rhythm of this, that um, board members and community members will kind of get the point. So maybe we can go through our, our slides a little more quickly and allow for some time to talk about whether any additional days off are needed, and also whether um, any administrators feel that we need to give our teachers um, any more flexibility with respect to something like a flex day. So why don't we start, um, Scott, if you can queue up the presentation, please. Yeah, I just wanted to let everybody know that I can't put this on full screen mode, so I've made some adjustments. If I do that, then you, you can't see anything in the Zoom call, so I'm gonna share it this way. That's um, okay. Glenn Lake. Do you have the special ed, Scott? You have to tell me what slide it is. So oh, that, that's the one. Oh, this starts it off. Oh, it was. I'm sorry. I didn't know it was changed. Um, okay. So essentially, um, our focus. Um, there's been an enormous amount of coordination um, among folks to get things moving. Our prior focus. Our pr Premier focus is student health and well-being. In order for students to be able to benefit from instruction, um, we're making sure that we have contact frequently with students. We've got specialists and teachers um, and staff holding one-on-one -on -one group sessions, meeting weekly, meeting daily, and sometimes coaching. Um, so we're using a multitude of service models. We're using Seesaw. We're using Google Classroom. And um, uh, we are using uh, Zoom frequently for units of service. Um, we are concerned about the, the few students who we are not able to connect with or aren't connecting with regularly. Um, so for these students, we've got frequent check-ins from a variety of school personnel. And even in some circumstances, staff are sending postcards. 
uh, we're frequently sending emails, calling students or calling families. Next slide, Scott. Um, so uh, this is the transition has taken a lot, taken a while. We continue to be concerned about meeting all student needs. We're um, we have, we've outlined. Um, I can't see the whole slide. I'm sorry. Um, we, we a notice went out in, initially uh, uh, informing parents that we're changing to an online methodology from the brick and mortar methodology. Um, then we also sent out a notice seeking permission for small group sessions. So we've that was really important in the first part of the pro process. Um, we find now that the majority of students are connecting and engaging. They're really focused on getting their general classroom work done. Um, that seems to be the priority, understandably. Um, but we are providing units of service, uh, related service. Um, and IEP teams are continuing to meet. And we're obligated to continue to meet all of the uh, compliance requirements, as Brian had mentioned. So scheduled meetings are still occurring. Um, we've provided students with explicit directions for the different platforms that we're using. We're providing staff with ongoing professional development. It's been a learning curve. Um, Zoom and Google Classroom um, and Seesaw are all new to them and some are continuing to struggle, so we'll provide more. Um, again, the special, educa ed special educators are providing small group, sometimes larger group. Uh, related service personnel are using teletherapy through Zoom. Um, and then special ed facilitators have uh, developed and are monitoring, monitoring a paraprofessional schedule. So all of our paraprofessionals are working under the guidance of case managers and facilitators. Uh, the paraprofessionals participate in co-sessions cl with classrooms and teachers. Um, sometimes they do this prior to then moving off and working and supporting students individually. At this point, nearly all of our paraprofessionals have computers or other devices. Um, the paraprofessionals are assisting teachers with reading, uh, with reteaching, adapting class materials, making lists of vocabulary, slides, et cetera. So they're doing a lot of the busy work that they can do to help out, to modify materials and make accommodations. Um, uh, the paraprofessionals are participating in team meetings and consults, so they're uh, keeping teachers abreast of what's going on. Um, students' needs have changed as time has passed. Uh, so the, the schedule is fluid uh, and there are changes as we move forward. You can go to the next one. Challenges, um, uh, the challenge that classroom teachers or, or related service personnel are having difficulty altering materials for connected learning and they've, they feel like they um, need to improve upon that and hopefully uh, require less time adapting materials that are being utilized. Uh, another challenge is um, some families have opted out and there are some children that are difficult to connect with their families. Uh, and some students are really, you know, very few, but some are just shutting down. So we're doing everything we can to keep them connected and moving forward. Um, another concern raised by some of the staff was the time spent reviewing classroom plans in order to accommodate or modify assignments. Um, they have to go through multiple sites to make sure they're um, covering all the needs. Um, and then just that connected learning really requires a higher level of executive functioning. Um, and so uh, these are new skills for students who uh, have challenges in some cases, developing calendars, developing schedules for themselves, getting up on time, all of that has to be taught specifically and directly. Next slide, Scott. So we currently have students in 11 different um, charter schools and private special ed schools. Um, uh, 11 to 10 private special education schools. Um, nine students are enrolled in charter schools. Uh, three students are placed by the courts and they're residential, so they're staying overnight. Our SAU coordinator stays in contact with every family um, and is uh, keeping communication flowing, making sure that students are receiving the services as listed on their IEP. Two of the schools are in Massachusetts. They started off by not providing, but they've since uh, started to provide services uh, I think there's a lot of room for growth, but um, that's sort of the status of everything. Nice, thank you, Jen. Yeah. Uh, so we'll move on to Mrs. Stoyle. All right, uh, so connected learning at Glen Lake School. Um, connected learning it really is about connections and we've said that through this, we recognize that um, families are under stress uh, and our students are in a new situation. And so we really are focusing on those connections. Um, connections over content is what we, what we say. 
making sure that everybody feels like they're um, connected and supported by the school is our goal. Uh, students are connecting to learning. Teachers, therapists, and paraprofessionals are connecting with students and families in a variety of ways, and you'll see that in a little bit. Students and parents are connecting to individualized supports and resources like technology, um, uh, interpreter services, uh, and uh, food services as well. We've let some families know about those supports as well, and, um, and even just um, getting paper and pencil out when, when it's really been necessary for a family to feel successful. Um, Professionals and support staff are also connecting and collaborating with each other routinely, and that's been in a variety of ways. Um, and I think our teams are uh, working harder uh, than ever. I, I, our kindergarten team is um, just one unit at this point, and they've always been a really great team. But if it was possible, they're you know they're even closer now, and I think they spend much of their day together collaborating when they're not working um, with students directly. Uh, connected learning we recognize requires flexibility and so we've tried to build in that flexibility so I guess this would be what I would say in response to the idea of a flex day I think we've tried to build in a flexibility that's actually more flexible than an assigned flex day um, so that we're trying to allow flexibility for students, re respecting families' unique situations and um, supporting their varied schedules. I'll show you a little bit more about that in a bit. Um, we're supporting families' needs as we talked about already. Um, we're also placing value on all the life lessons right now that children are learning as part of a family that's tackling a big challenge together. Um, this will be what they're talking about with their kids and grandkids um, when they're complaining about going to school someday. <laughs> so, um, And uh, we're supporting parents in their efforts to support their students within the family time constraints. So we've worked through this to find some uh, some strategies that are more successful than others. For staff, we have flexible scheduling. So we're um, allowing them to, to figure out their schedule during the day, allowing time during the day for homework balance so that um, you know some of them find that they do better starting earlier, taking um, uh, a, a longer break in the middle of the day and then going back, especially as they're managing children in their homes as well in a lot of cases. Um, so we've, uh, allowed for that flexibility, encouraged the disconnecting on the weekends, um, and then uh, support coaching and problem solving is what we're work working on with staff and, um, and support for staff who are learning new skills in the face of um, many obstacles. And so we're trying to allow them to, um, to kind of learn as they go too and, and feel that, that that's okay. They're doing a great job, so. Um, so really, all of this comes down to support and compassion for the many challenges being faced by everybody in this situation and supporting that work-life balance for all. So in preschool, um, videos, there's a lot of video instruction going on and that allows students to see teachers and it allows parents to access learning at any time. So. Um, Rather, uh, there are some video conferencing things going on with our preschool classes. However, um, it's been found to be more successful to offer the videos that are up that parents can access at whatever time works for them. Um, and there are children who have been watching certain videos over and over again um, and, uh, and kids that really just look forward to that time seeing their teacher and reports from parents about just watching their child's whole demeanor and their, they relax and take a breath when they see that, that reassuring presence on the screen, which is really nice to hear. Um, I think we can go on. We've got, yep, and uh, this slide also shows one of our paraprofessionals, and I'll talk about that a little more. They've been really involved in um, making videos as well for instruction. Kindergarten has also been utilizing videos for the same reason, and also along that same regard, um, they're providing a weekly schedule now uh, to support flexible family pacing. So after listening to feedback from families, uh, they realized that having the um, 
ability, families having the ability to look at a whole week's instruction and decide what worked for them. Today is just not gonna be a good day for math in this house, but you know what? We could do the movement activities today and we'll get that done instead. Uh, so we're, uh, we've tried to help families to pace themselves that way by showing them what's what's there. There's been um, some different ways. Uh, you can see on the slide uh, an email that shows different ways different children solved a, a riddle that was given by Mr. Tisbert with toothpicks. Um, and uh, there's a different um, books of instruction basically that have been put together by our kindergarten team um, along with letters and videos of, of messages of support and um, and advice along the way for families. Next, there we go. In um, special education, uh, our special educators are using multiple strategies, and this applies to related service providers as well, multiple strategies and formats to provide individualized support for students and families. And that includes video conferencing, email, phone consults, video instruction, and then visual supports. There have been materials that have been made and just mailed out to families uh, so that they can support uh, their children with the kind of icons and um, and uh, things that we use in the classroom to help kids move through tasks. Next slide, related services. So there is a lot on this slide and this is um, OT and speech. Um, PT isn't here. I will tell you PT has um, been working really hard though and um, being really creative in how to in how to do this uh, from a distance um, and working directly with families. Um, this is uh, this shows a speech language therapy blog, um, and we currently have a speech language pathologist and a speech language assistant who is covering for our other speech language pathologist who's on maternity leave. They have done an amazing job. This is um, one of six different pages of um, activities for that week, and it offers um, a wide variety of activities to cover um, speech sounds, um, and then uh, also different language um, goals that children might have. In addition to that, they've done some teletherapy and some um, some work with phone consults for parents. We've really had to move to more of an early intervention model where we're doing a lot of parent coaching too, because obviously kids can't really do this by themselves in front of a computer. So, um, so it's more like what they're um, used to before they come to us for preschool. And then occupational therapy, she has a menu addressing different areas of need, um, and that's over on the left of the screen. And then what you see, all the little video um, snippets around, um, Christy Quinones, our occupational therapist, has worked with our paraprofessionals, and they take all of the different things on that menu on the left, and they make videos of them so that parents can see how to do these things at home with their children. And it has been just um, amazing watching our um, our paraprofessionals really who were really timid about being on camera just really uh, run with this and, and do an, an excellent job. Next slide. Um, ESOL guidance and nursing all have a role in this as well. Um, on the left, and it's pretty tiny print, but on the left you can see um, some of our guidance activities. Those are provided and that's a regular um, weekly um, assignment, uh, but it's always there to support our kindergartners as well. So it's not just um, and uh, something assigned for them. There's one thing that's a, a jar there where kids are sad about missing out on something. They can write about it in the jar. And then someday, some other time when they actually can do these things again, they can pull those out. And um, so they're kind of saving those experiences for later. Um, in the middle, our nurse has been making, she usually does a monthly health lesson for all of our kindergarten classes. She is now pr providing a weekly um, health lesson, which includes a, a video um, for our students. And this one was on uh, safe hiking and going on a virtual hike and obeying all those rules of social distancing and, and good, um, good ecological citizenship as well. And then ESOL, um, 
Susie is obviously showing her expression as she <laughs> works through a book, but she's been doing readings online. And then also behind, you can see some of the resources she's been providing for families. Um, these are um, free uh, materials that families can access to improve their English vocabulary. Uh, she's also been doing a lot of creative problem solving for a lot of our families who uh, are having extra challenges because of another language um, accessing materials. So staying connected, we're doing a lot of checking in, connecting um, people with resources and offering support and flexibility um, in, in every way that we can so that we all can get through this and, um, and uh, maintain our humanity in all of it. So. so Kathy, I had a surprise for you. <laughs> it's Ernie. <laughs> I can't read what it says. Oh, we love Glen Lake. Love Glen Lake. <laughs> Thanks, Ernie. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize you had a cutout of yourself. <laughs> okay, we'll move on to Mrs. Pishka. Okay, so um, to go along with what Kathy's already mentioned, um, Connected learning requires a collective commitment of communication and um, collaboration and commitment from, um, from everyone. Uh, this instructional design and delivery allows students and their families to access the content or participate in learning at their convenience. Um, again, that's, that's flexibility um, along with uh, our staff as Kathy's already mentioned. Uh, communication is key. We use a number of communication tools, uh, emails, phone calls, video conferencing, to name a few for um, to assist with, with the communication and with collaboration. Next slide, Scott. So I thought this was cute. This was on our, one of our first grade um, pages. I will teach you in a room. I will teach you now on Zoom. I will teach you in your house. I will teach you with a mouse. I will teach you here and there. I will teach you because I care. So just do your very best and do not worry about the rest. So that is really our message to parents as well. We're re trying to reassure them, um, parents and guardians, that their efforts are very much appreciated, um, emphasizing that this is a collective effort and teachers are making videos to kick off the day. They're providing mini lessons and giving directions using those videos. Um, they also have um, video conferences in small group instruction. Uh, they do wellness checks with their students and then they also do whole class meetings and celebrations. Uh, what Scott's on now, this, um, this is one of the digital classroom examples they all look very much the same. They've worked, like I said, um, consistently together um, in a uniform way. So if you looked at any fourth grade um, blog or the Google Classroom pages, you'd see a similar schedule, um, support right there for parents. Uh, they start their day with a, what I would call an email blast where um, the parents receive um, a greeting and a schedule of the day and links that they can just go right from that email to these other locations. You can change that slide, slide Scott. This is um, for grade one and two. This is a picture of Seesaw um, on the left. And then also, like I said, we use utilize the teacher blog. So it, no matter where you go, it will help you direct to, to where you um, ultimately where the resources are. So um, these have been wonderful tools for parents. Um, the, the blog um, typically has a video of the teacher greeting them and then um, the seesaw is where their assignments go uh, when they're completed. Teachers can comment on those. And um, as I said, the you open any second grade teacher's um, Seesaw account and you would see that they, they have been planning together and um, 
in collaborating on, on their efforts. And that has saved a lot of work. I think if each one worked individually, um, there would be a lot of a lot of work, but they've had opportunity more so than they ever have when they were in the in the building, um, because of course they'd have their own students with them, but they've been able to have lots and lots of conversation. And you can change the slide. So remote support, um, educators who provide supplemental support also use a digital classroom or classrooms and teacher blogs. Um, students who received additional reading, math and guidance support continue to get that support. And here are some examples of some modified curriculum. Um, the, the part in the middle, the recorded lesson is actually a PowerPoint that our reading specialist puts together for her students and um, you click the button and Mrs. Chisholm reads to the students what, what's on the page and um, basically runs her lesson through a PowerPoint. Uh, then our school counselor is also doing second step lessons and um, counseling with individual students. So that's an example of, of something that she's been working on with the kids on how to calm down. Um, this slide, this is um, examples from beyond the digital experience. Uh, students participate in Unified Arts daily or multiple times a day if they wish. Uh, they have five activities in physical education, in music, in STEAM, in art, um, and in library to choose from. Um, these teachers create a, a bingo board is what they call it uh, for student choice in each of the grade levels. And also in addition to that, the classroom teachers have created extension activities. And um, most of these choices are active, hands-on, and do not require devices. You can change the slide, Scott. And um, lastly, school spirit, we still have it. Uh, we've been, um, trying to celebrate things in unique ways. Um, autism awareness, we um, encouraged all the children to wear their uh, blue and um, watch videos around um, uniqueness. Uh, volunteer appreciation, we are working on our um, appreciation um, um, writing pieces in the classrooms, in the virtual classrooms. Uh, we have a sports day coming up. Uh, we have a staff appreciation planned and we had a yearbook cover contest along with the food drive that's happening right now and purple up day is coming up this week on the 22nd if people want to wear purple um, it is in support of our military children and the picture there is um kira she is our student council president and she has a message on the side there And that's it for Maple Lab. Okay, moving on to Jerry. Okay, thank you everyone. So we have um, a lot of the same information as that we they had at Glen Lake and almost exactly the same as that we have at Maple. It's the same thing. We try to have the same curriculum, the, the same collaboration. Um, we just have a little different flair being Bartlett. So it is connected learning. I put a little knot, I don't know if you can see it, a little rope knot, I had my own little visual I have to show you. So um, we are reaching out to all of our kids. It's been a very interesting um, switch, but we're, we're making the best of it. And the kids are connected with us, we're connected with them and um, staff are definitely connected together. So our faculty and staff, we connect, we have weekly meetings um, for all kinds of our groups. We're meeting with paraprofessionals, which is something that doesn't always happen during the school day. So that's been really nice. Um, we're meeting individually with, with, with teachers and with small groups. And um, I've seen a lot more of my staff during this remote learning experience than I do um, because they're with their kids all the time. So how we support each other, we have Microsoft Teams. We're doing um, video conferences, checking in. We have collaborative spaces, which is really exciting. We've always collaborated um, in person and we keep documents and notes, but we have spaces where they can go on at their own time um, and add lessons and share lessons and resources, but then also video chat about everything too. 
Um, we have health and wellness information that comes out from the nurse, the OT, um, PT. Everybody in the school has been really good about if they find something that's helpful with the life school balance for the teachers, they send it out. Um, to, to the staff and it's been very helpful. And we share that at the beginning of every meeting, what we've done, how our family is um, and what's working for us. So uh, we have digital tips, tools and information from the library and media, media specialists. We cannot live without our media specialists. So a shout out to her and the whole team across the district. They're working together all the time. Um, and we went from teaching lessons in the classroom to um, finding out on Sunday night, you know, Monday morning, we're starting with lessons and we have done an amazing job uh, and we're continuing to learn. So it's an exciting time. If we can make the most of it, we've learned a lot. And the, the Bartlett Information Center has a lot of information. We have some very talented teachers who are very tech savvy and we are all becoming tech savvy. There's also a Google Classroom um, that we have for, um, it's like a planning classroom, but it's Google resources for everyone in the school. So that's been very helpful. Um, family and students. So we have lots of family connections. We're um, doing on ongoing feedback and digital platforms. And what that looks like is in CSOTS, the, the first and second grade platform, you could actually talk to your kids um, and comment on, the teachers can comment on their work and all of the specialists can. Um, the kids really love hearing our voices and we love hearing their voices and seeing their their work there. We reach out via email and phone, video conferences, um, Facebook updates. We're continually in contact with parents. So the student connections are super fun. Um, I'm lucky I've, I've been, like Steve said, I've been doing some of the food passing out and it's just so adorable when you see someone, one of the kids in the car six feet away with the window down um, and just making that connection, it's great. Uh, student that's connecting in all different ways, the same as with the families. And like we said, phone conferencing, video conferencing um, with their teachers, with their specialists, with counselors, um, OT. It's um, the connections are everywhere. So this is just a quick thing on the top. It just shows one of our fourth grade teachers, how she um, commented about how proud she was about her students. And they really look forward to this. And the parents are enjoying this because the parents are hearing the same messages. Um, it, typically, you know, sometimes kids go home and they say, you know, I don't know what I did today. We didn't do much. Well, this way the parents are seeing it. So I think um, the parents are enjoying this too. So the beginner string lesson, Mrs. Price has uh, transformed her education and she's making videos and she's continuing on with strings lessons. We've even sent home the recorders. And the bottom right corner is just one week of, um, of interactions that they've had through the Seesaw platform that doesn't include anything like Zoom conferences, it's just digital. Um, so setting up a successful day every day, our teachers are very similar to Maple Ave. They start with the morning message, they have a video, um, they send out an email blast, they have the week planned out for the teach for the families so that they can space out the work so that it's flexible for the families. And the teachers have that flexibility about when they're um, correcting it as well. And so the one on the left is um, Zoe and she's got a fourth grade classroom and she's putting up a video that kids love the videos. Um, the next one, the Monday Partial Sums Edition, this is an, an example of second grade collaboration. So the second grade teachers are planning, they have their own planning classroom, as, long as, as well as all the grades. And so this was on one, um, one teacher, Mrs. Pelchett, made this video lesson, which is tricky to do at home with your own materials and your two little ones that you're taking care of. Uh, she did a great job. And then she shared it with all of the teachers on that team. So they're dividing up the work and it's fun for the kids to see all of the teachers on the grade level. Down the bottom right, it's a contest that our art teacher put on. Our art teacher is doing some amazing things and keeping kids connected. And that is something um, that a lot of the kids feel successful. Individualized instruction on the next slide. Um, we have every, I could only pick a couple, couple things to put on, but our reading specialist is putting up tips and resources. Um, our special ed teachers and related service providers are doing videos. Our paraprofessionals are busy making videos, reading books. Um, there's an amazing amount of work here and it's very personal and connected. And my favorite quote for, through all of this is from Mrs. McNamee, our, our um, library media specialist. Every time she ends her anything she does, a video, she always says, we're all learning here and we are all learning here. So, um, individualized instruction 
there's a lot that many teachers and many children, uh, many children don't see behind the scenes, but like that's Mrs. McQuaid for ESOL. She is reaching out, she's translating, she's uh, providing other resources for students with other languages. We are doing what we need to do for our kids, just like we would in school, but we've found creative ways to do it out of school. Um, and Jess Fournier, the OT is teaching all of us. She sends things to the staff as well, but yoga and breathing, um, zones of regulation, our guidance counselors teaching second step, our nurse is doing health lessons. We're individualizing um, for each individual student, but also for groups and for the class. And my last slide is we take care of each other as we do it across the whole SAU. Um, the Meals for Kids has been great. The food bags before that was wonderful. And if you have time to click on it at some point, the Bartlett teacher video is a three minute video with just all the teachers um, with a, a message for the kids. So we're very connected. That's all. Thank you, Gary. Uh, we'll move on to Wendy. Okay, thank you, Brian. We'll go ahead to the next slide, Scott. So I wanted to start off by talking about the strong communications that we have at Mountain View um, with parents, our frequent emails, not only from the administrative team, but from our teachers as well, our really strong social media presence. Uh, the week of March 23rd, we had a virtual spirit week and posted pictures, not only on our website, but on our Facebook page for families and for students to be able to enjoy. Um, on April 6th, we did a video slideshow with messages from our teachers uh, with shouts out to our kids. And we also put that on our website. And coming up soon, we have a virtual talent show where students and staff can submit some of their best talents. And we're going to put that up again on our Facebook page and again on our website. Um, I also am updating our principal's message at least once a week. Usually it's two to three times a week to make sure that parents and community members can stay um, engaged in what's going on. With our staff, we have frequent emails, uh, department and team meetings, uh, full staff meetings. On Monday mornings, I host a coffee and questions with Wendy where staff can come in and ask questions or just talk. Uh, again, that goes back to that life uh, work balance. We have those discussions. And then we do a lot of Zoom and big blue button small group meetings, um, not only with our students, but for professional development as well. Our teacher website. So I wanted to talk about this briefly because we received some feedback from parents that were looking for some more specific information about what was going on in our Google Classrooms. Um, as many of you are aware, our Google Classrooms are password protected. Um, and because of that, a number of our parents who are um, leaving the house to go to work during the day or perhaps have a middle school student who uh, doesn't have to work right next to a parent, they would love to know what's going on. So we are keeping up with our teacher websites and what you're seeing up there is kind of our essentials that we've asked all of our professional staff to have up uh, with the agenda, which is either updated daily or weekly so that kids and parents can stay up to date our essential questions of the content that we're studying, and we have put that up in kid-friendly language. Due dates for assignments, um, and those assignment names not only mirror what's in Google Classroom, but also are mirrored in PowerSchool as well. So as parents are keeping up with grades, they can see that in there. The teacher office hours, our links to Google Classroom, and then any reminders or well wishes for students. So again, this is just another resource, like I said, not only for our students, but for parents also to know what's going on. Go ahead, Scott. This is just an example um, of parts of one of our teacher websites, just so you can see that uh, with the essential questions. Uh, what's going on each week, and there's a couple of weeks up there and all of those links. So moving on to Google Classroom. Um, so our teams of teachers have their regular Google Classroom set up for their students to go in, but we've also created teacher workspace uh, Google Classrooms that all of our special education uh, case managers, our service providers, administrators, and then everybody in that department has access to. So this is the spot where we can go in and we can collaborate and edit work and share work so that the workload becomes manageable for everyone. 
our case managers are able to go in to the classwork and into the streams and be able to get classwork out so that they can accommodate it for um, any of our special education 504 or other students who need some modifications or differentiation. We also are continuing to use our Pearson Science, our Big Ideas, our Everyday Math, and our Wonders program, as all of them have an online component as well. So this is just a snapshot of just showing the teachers and all of their access to be able to go in and change all of that. I'm not going to speak too much about special education because I feel like the other principals and Dr. Dolliff talked about the remarkable job that all of our paraprofessionals and special education teachers are doing. Uh, so we'll go ahead and move on to the next slide. So throughout this year, um, if you remember back when I made my budget presentation, we've been working on our future ready skills. And these are skills like organization, goal setting, and time management. Um, and this has continued into our connected learning environment. What you're seeing up on the screen is an example of a week-long unit that was offered just last week in seventh grade. Um, and our guidance staff is also continuing to offer our second step and our character development lessons. Our information center, just as when the school building is open, continues to be our hub, not only for students, but for staff. The information center has been offering tutorials for students and for staff on all aspects of Google Classroom and the different tools that it offers. It's also offering access to eBooks, audiobooks, makerspace activities, digital citizenship lessons, and a number of um, enrichment activities are also housed in this section. You can go ahead to the next one. And that's just another just showing and we've set up a, a um, revolving uh, amount of videos that are in there for students and parents and staff to be able to access to keep up to date on Google Classroom and all of its uses. So for enrichment activities, for those students who um, are looking to move beyond what's going on in the regular classroom, we're beginning to offer a lot of those choice activities to extend their learning. Um, you're seeing some of those examples up on the slide in front of you. For example, our seventh grade science department just put out um, a, an engineering activity of creating a birdhouse or a bird feeder using household materials and they collected photos and videos and some of them were, were pretty remarkable. Um, seventh and eighth grade math also offered a shark tank web quest. We have an egg drop challenge that's for all grades and then we have some links to some virtual tours of places like the aquarium, Yellowstone National Park and we're continuing to grow on our enrichment activities as we go through. In closing, um, I want to make sure, oh, and actually you're seeing some of those birdhouse feeder enrichment examples that some of our seventh grade students made. Uh, they did truly, like I said, a remarkable job and this was optional activities for the students to be able to do. I think in closing, I want to make sure that I am addressing that question that you asked about um, teachers and in, in the notion of that flex day. I think um, it's important for you to know that I trust my staff to not only know themselves, but to know their students and what makes sense for them. And I almost feel like with the governor making his decision on extending remote learning for the year, that this, the teachers understand that this is a marathon now and it's not a sprint. Um, and I am in support of them knowing themselves and knowing what their kids need and being able to offer things like um, enrichment activities as an option if they need to for a day, offering multi-day projects or assignments so that students, again, are working on those executive function skills and it allows the teachers some breathing room. The use of those second step lessons that are offered through our guidance department having an error correction day, but I support them in, in using that flexibility where they see fit rather than assigning it. Because like I said, I do trust them to know themselves and to know their students and what works well. Thank you, Mrs. Kohler. Moving on lastly to Mrs. McCann. 
Thanks, Brian. One of the things we did when we started out um, is we've looked to gather some information from our staff and our kids as we've gone along so we could have a little bit better of an idea of what's working, what's not, and continue to make adjustments. So I want to share a little of that data first. And if you look um, between March 27th and last week, we've seen huge growth in our comfort level of our staff with this new and exciting delivery of instruction. Um, looking to really have the, the graphs be the blue and the red, really showing the highest level of comfort for our staff. And you can see that gap has dramatically closed and we've, we've seen 20% of our teaching staff move out of the orange in the last three weeks. So really, really seeing growth in comfort with that. Uh, if we look at the next slide, Scott, in terms of taking care of themselves, the blue is good. Uh, we have almost 90% of our staff who is choosing to participate in available collaborative opportunities. So this is working together through virtual meetings, virtual trainings, getting together for planning of instruction and assessments. Uh, almost 85% report that they are finding time during the, the day to make time for themselves, take a break, take a walk, and have that balance and that, as I mentioned earlier, a good chunk of them are saying that they're able to disconnect on the weekends. So real positive trends in terms of where folks are at as we continue to, to work in this new world. In terms of our kids self-reporting, uh, they're telling us that they're finding their teachers are, are primarily posting new assignments two or three days a week. Um, and this really speaks to the flexibility that our approach and our schedules have given to both our staff and our kids. Um, kids really would prefer, they're telling us, for more of this graph to be in the purple. They really like when everything is laid out at the start of the week and they can plan how they're going to really use their time over the course of the week. Um, and, and we're continuing to, to move towards a, a goal of seeing that purple grow a little bit more as well. And kids are, are telling us they're getting a lot of time to finish the work that's being posted. It's not as if something's going up and it's due later that day. Um, more than half of their, or close to half of their assignments, uh, they have at least 48 hours or three days to complete. And in terms of the amount of time that they're spending working during this school day, this is self-reported and obviously there's a lot of factors that go into it and influence it, but we're really pleased with the amount of red and orange that's on this graph. These are our kids who are spending three to six hours a day working on the, the assignments and the lessons um, and engaging in the instruction that's being posted. Not loving the 10% in the green. This is kids who are telling us they're doing seven or more hours a day. This is something that um, I've, I've addressed with kids directly, at, as directly as I can. I do a Monday morning announcement and I've asked if they are in that 10% that they're reaching out directly to their teachers and sharing that and working on a plan to reduce that. Um, and this is an area we're going to be focusing on ourselves the next week, week and a half in terms of reaching out and, and looking to make contact with these kids. A lot of our, our time the last few weeks has been reaching out and trying to connect and, and engage kids who had fallen off the grid as we've made this transition. We're finding we've got a real large percentage of kids who are invested and engaged every day, um, but seven plus hours is, is too much. And, and we wanna work to get all our kids into ideally the orange and the red. So things we're doing, we are, living in the Google Classroom. Um, everything you're, that I'm gonna show you real quick is taking place in those Google Classrooms. We are doing a daily attendance and check-in for each grade level. They have their own classroom. And Scott, if you wanna go to the next slide, when they go in there, there's three kind of consistent things that they're gonna find. The first is a daily check-in. They just take two minutes, they let us know that they're here and they check off um, the classes that they're gonna be working on for that day. And then we're able to use that to gauge attendance and co connectivity on a regular basis. Uh, we're doing weekly Monday morning announcements with kind of updates and tips and tricks for kids. 
Our students are continuing to produce our Grizzly Buzz podcast, and we're putting that out on Fridays. And then the classrooms are grade level specific. So as other information comes up that we want to share with them, we're pushing it out that way. All of our classes are in the Google Classroom, including our professional development. We've got a great Google Classroom support site that has been completely designed by and is supported by um, faculty and staff who are providing different tips and tricks and trainings and they're sharing and collaborating. Every Tuesday is High Tech Tuesday and there's a whole series of workshops offered throughout the day for our staff by other staff members for using the Google Classroom. We also have resources for our paraeducators in providing tips and tricks for them to help better support our students in this remote environment. We've got our gap classes in the Google Classroom as well. So we've been able to continue and move forward with those courses for both our high school kids and our adult learners. And I just highlighted on here some of the embedded features um, in case you haven't seen them in the Google Classroom. So there is a calendar and there is a to-do list that auto-populates from all of the classes that you are enrolled in. And this really helps with the organization and the workflow for all of our students. What do we got next? Our alternative education program is also working in Google Classroom. We have, as you can see through it, we've been able to integrate a lot of our textbook and um, online resource materials. When you go into an individual lesson, one of the things that students are able to do is they can open it right up to this individual page if you're looking at the screen all the way to the right where it shows me as the student all of the assignments that I have for the class. It tells me what I've turned in. As you can see, I am not good about getting my assignments done. Um, and there's also filters that help me identify what's coming up, what have I already done, what's been returned graded. So there's a lot of really nice um, natural features within this program that help all of our students with their organization and their executive functioning. And we've made it work for everything. Um, we've got painting classes happening via remote instruction. Out of the gate, Scott and Laura worked with us to get these fabulous little kits um, ordered and dropped, delivered at every kid's house. And you can see the instructor, Donna Carolian, has created videos. And the, the same thing in the Amazon picture are the supplies on the table on her desk as she's providing the lessons. So she's working with the exact resources and materials the kids have. And then she's updating them on a regular basis with what she's finding. So her little announcement on this day was that the green paint is not great to work with. So here are some tips and tricks. And she's sharing her product as she's going. We have uh, special education, as people have talked about, all sorts of, of resources available in meeting all of our learners through the program and through specialized and individualized program that we've been able to embed right into Google Classroom. And then finally, um, I'll share our AP Calculus BC class as well and very typical setup. And these are the assignments. Here's a note and kind of lays out what's happening for the week. But also I wanted to end with this because I think it's really uh, reflective of where our teachers are at and, and the importance that they're placing on our kids and our families finding balance and taking care of themselves. So the final assignment that she had for the week for the kids was the hour challenge that over the course of the week, they took an hour, whether it was in one day or broken up over the course of the week to do something that they love. Uh, that was not math related, that is not school related, and that they share with her a picture of what that is and a little paragraph about that. Um, and she's putting all of those together to share with the class. So it's just another way to stay connected, continue those expectations. We're continuing to push through and have them ready to take that AP Calc BC test in just a few weeks, but at the same time, really balancing all of this and all of the life right now that we're experiencing. Well, thank, thank you, Mrs. McCann. I would, uh, I would say that's exactly why I'm so proud. When, when you look at um, the quality of the work that's happening, the leadership that it takes to pull this off and the remarkable work that our teachers have done. So 
we, we could have gone on and on, um, but I wanted to at least give you an overview of the many, many um, outstanding things that are happening in our connected learning plan. Um, so I couldn't be more proud of the work that you just saw. And um, I might stop there and ask if um, any board members have any questions for any of the administrators or anything that you'd like to know more about. Uh, Ellen, did you have a question? I don't have a question. I just want to say, wow. And <laughs> thank you, all of you, for that information. It was very informative. I felt very eye-opening. And I was particularly interested in the upper grade levels numbers and as how our staff and our kids are doing and all. Um, it's impressive. And I have a feeling nobody needs to answer, but that what our staff and kids, how they're learning in this remote environment um, will impact our educational methods going forward after this year. I can see some really positive things coming out of this as we move forward and get back to what we're going to call a Well, I don't like using the term new normal, but <laughs> make it a, a bit more interactive with kids through the computer. So thank you very much for all that information. Thank you, Ellen. Dan, you had something to say? Yes, I, I want to thank you all for this because it really did pretty much answer my question at first. And without a lot of convincing on my part or somebody else's part to me, I'm going to have a hard time voting to change anything that we're doing right now. Yes, well said, Dan. Uh, is there any other questions for any of our principals from any board members? Any statements? Ginny, you have something? Oh. Go ahead, Ginny. Okay. Um, I think that your presentations have been amazing. And I do see um, some flex in what's going on in your programs for the students and the teachers. I also see an awful lot of work being done, or I'm thinking that there is, on the teacher's part in producing videos and new plans and on a weekly basis. I'm hoping that um, they really are not overdoing knowing that teachers are teachers and they're going to come up with the very best product that they can get. Um, Kim, your um, information was helpful. I'm hoping that the um, elementary school teachers and the um, Glen Lake teachers are having the same kind of experiences with their teachers, um, that they really are knowing that they have families at home that they're working with. Um, and they're coming up with all of this new um, videos that they're making and, you know, all creative new things that they're coming up with. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort. Um, and we have students that are coming on all times of day, which is, you know, teachers used to have an, a seven to three or, you know, eight to three thirty, whatever day. And that's not, the new normal. And so I'm concerned about teachers. And so I just would like somebody to let me know that, you know, really everything is going okay. Because I, I know teachers are not going to be the ones to say, well, this is really tough, because they're going to do it because they, they um, are going to do anything for our kids. So I'm just hoping that really, they're getting the support. Um, and you know, everything's okay. Thank you, Jenny. Does anybody want to, Jerry, I saw your hand up. Did you want to comment on that? Yeah, I think that um, the teachers are definitely getting the support that they need. They're, they've learned to collaborate and they've, they've gotten together so much and they are starting to find that life work balance. I think that teachers are teachers and they always want the work to be um, their best 
foot forward no matter what. But I do think that they're, my teachers are saying they're excited. They want to keep going. They've got the kids in a good routine. They don't want any days off. They just want to keep going. It's good. The schedules are working out. Um, that's the feedback that they're giving me. Thank you, Jerry. Kathy, I saw your hand up. Did you want to say something too? Yeah, I think um, I, I would agree with what Jerry said. And I think um, as far as, I, I think teachers, um, we've been together quite a while through a lot of stuff. And, and I think um, teachers do feel okay um, saying when it's getting to be too much. And that's why I would have given you a very different answer a couple of weeks ago. And, um, and it really was a lot. And they were trying to make sense of it all and organize it all. And it's a very different feel in the conversations now. And they're excited about um, the things that they've learned to do. Uh, and they're working together. So what you saw shows um, all of their different contributions, but that doesn't mean that they're all doing it on their own for the week. So the kindergarten team has divvied up their planning so that somebody's making that um, walk through it's actually a literacy lesson about art but it involves in um, creating a work of art and so somebody was concentrating on just that lesson for the week and somebody else was working on math lessons and instructional videos and they're putting those together um, on their site so there's a real uniformity across the kindergarten team but it's also enabled them to dig more deeply into the teaching part and to free up time to interact with students. And Seesaw has really helped them manage those contributions because they aren't just clogging up um, email. And I think they're able to get the work. Um, I think sometimes parents at the beginning too just needed a lot of help figuring out all the technology. And, um, and a lot of that is behind them now too. So they're spending less time uh, walking people through that sort of stuff um, and more time just being able to really appreciate what the kids are doing and comment on it. And they've set parameters on the times that they are available to do that as well. Um, but Seesaw is really good about marking what's new to come in. So when you come back to it, you can pick up where you left off very easily. So. Thank you, Kathy. Wendy, I saw your hand up. Go Thank ahead, Thank you, Wendy. Heather. So I thought I would also jump in with what Kathy and Jerry had talked about. So at Mountain View as well, all of our grade level departments are planning together and they are pushing out assignments um, that are exactly the same. So it doesn't matter if you're on team 5-1 or you're on team 5-2, all of the math students are getting those same assignments. So what's nice about that uniformity is that teachers are able to divide and conquer with making videos. So even though perhaps you might have Mrs. Cruitt as your math teacher, you might be watching a video that was created by Mrs. Lewis. So they're sharing and divvying up those responsibilities. And that's the same with our special education teachers as well. If one of them is working on differentiating or accommodating an assignment, they're doing that to help one another out because another one might be giving some services, some direct instruction uh, via Zoom or Big Blue Button. So I think that they've really come into their own about working together and offloading some of that workload um, so they don't feel like it's all just on them. They really have that collaboration uh, going. So I just wanted to mention that. Thank you, Wendy. That's perfect. Retta, I saw your hand up. Did you yeah, have uh, um, just a statement and, and yeah. some a couple of questions. And, and first, I really wanted to commend everyone. What you're doing is absolutely amazing. Um, I work in online, you know, 100% online. And what you've described in the short amount of time has hit some of the critical points, you know, the flexibility and asynchronous and using all of these tools and collaborating, dividing, conquered that some people don't get in years. So this is um, really impressive what you're doing. And I'm sure some of this will spill over to other times. I guess ultimately what I'm thinking about are, you know, the questions on the table, which are, you know, do we take more long weekends? Do we end school early? Do we, um, you know, do, you know, do we have flex time? I think the flex time really came out pretty clear across the board. But if there's any um, comments from any of you that would, I guess, reassure us that, you know, when we come to any votes or if any votes even get pushed forward, is there anything else we need to know? Thank you, Retta. 
Is there any, so it sounds like the flex time is, is already being given to all of your staff members. So um, I think that's pretty clear that we don't need to mandate a day unless there's a board member that feels strongly the other way, then we can discuss that. Um, the other thing, oh, go ahead, Ellen. You're, oh, I'm there. sorry, it's okay. Um, uh, what I heard really helped me a great deal with some of the concerns I had um, as I relate to the discussion from last week. Um, I, I, we were told, and it appears absolutely is taking place, that our administration and our staff have the flexibility to do what they feel is needed for their, the children they're teaching, whether we call it flex time or something else, like whatever. Um, but that is in fact happening. And it appears that there's a great deal of connectiveness, not only between and among staff, but with the students as well. And uh, hopefully with their parents, maybe at the lower levels um, to help them. It's helped, it's helped my thinking as well. Um, Heather, um, I don't know if I'm premature or not, but I, I wanna ask you as chair, how would you feel about a motion that would be, or no motion at all, just leave our calendar as we've already determined it to be, um, but in light of all the discussion um, that a motion would could be made that would say Goffstown takes no further action on uh, the rest of the, changing the school calendar beyond what we've already done. Um, I'm just curious if you think that would be uh, something of help. don't change anything. If we leave what we have now, which is mm -hmm. April break, and we get out mm -hmm. June 11th, unless mm -hmm. we change something, I don't think we need a motion. Okay. Dan, I see your hand up. I would agree with that. If someone wants to make a motion that's definitive, that sends a message, we could take up, and I'm not suggesting we do, a suggestion that was made at the SAU, because I think, the vote, the the individual vote passed where a weighted vote may not have passed. And I didn't call for a weighted vote. It just wasn't worth it at the time. So I'm in favor of just moving on the agenda. Right, thank you, Dan. So the recommendation from the SAU board was to discuss flex time, which I think were unanimous that our staff is doing this already and we're not going to mandate a specific day and also whether we want to implement a three-day weekend. Ellen? <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with what you said and, and what uh, Dan was saying. It, it's pretty clear from what these reports and this presentation we've just had that more like long weekends and stuff, it's just not needed. Um, as for, that's what I'm gathering from all this, this information. Um, the reason I'm thinking of making a deliberate statement as a form of a vote that Goffstown will not make any further changes is to, to make sure that that's clear um, going forward and that no one thinks, well, maybe they'll change. I don't know, I, 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 that's why I asked the chair and others um, how they feel about it. I'm happy not to take any further action, but um, it just not taking that action might be enough of a statement. I don't know, but um, I agree with what you and Dan had been talking about. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. Susanna, you had your hand. Yes, I just want to make sure that if we, I mean, the flex days are kind of obvious now, but if we make determination of no long weekends, that we also let the parents decide if they want to take a long weekend. You know, that they are not, they, that we are not saying, oh, weekends are oh, long weekends, now you can't have a long weekend. So give the parents an option too. So it's clear in the message. Yes, we don't have them, but if you choose to do so, 
it is up to your discretion. Right. And Susanna, that it has been said, I think on a weekly basis by Brian right. in the videos that if any parent needs to take a break, they have, they have that right to take a break. I right. saw parents today that said, today's not a good day. We're not doing anything. Right. And, and that is absolutely fine with that. Um, Janelle, I saw your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to say I, um, I was concerned about how the teachers and the parents and the kids having a flex day, but um, I think a lot, of my, a lot of my concern arose from the beginning of all this and um, seeing, you know, myself struggle and, I, and I'm here to, you know, teach both kids, but, um, you know, luckily enough, but my husband works. And I just started thinking about all these parents who don't have time. Um, because they're both working full time and getting home at six or seven or late and not having time to sit down and work with their kids individually, um, that this might give them a chance to catch their breath and uh, reconnect as a family. But I think um, from what I'm hearing, it sounds like uh, we're, we're finally getting into groove and I, and I feel that myself too um, in, in Maple Lab is that and in all the schools, it sounds like we're starting to get into a groove and I am tending to uh, lean more towards thinking that, you know, just pushing through here is what's going to be best for the district, the kids and uh, the teachers and everybody. Thank you, Janelle. So it sounds like, I mean, I've heard there's still a couple of board members who haven't spoken up, um, but it sounds like the flex day is off the table. And the question is whether we do one three-day weekend. We already have Memorial Day. That is part of the schedule. Um, so I'm willing to take a consensus to see if everybody's good with that. I, I don't foresee, I don't feel that we need a motion because we're not implement, if we decide not to implement a three-day weekend, we do not need a motion. Dan? I am in favor of the last day of school now being June 11th. Okay, thank you, Dan. Does everybody else seem to agree with that? I can't see Tim or Jared. Can you do a... I, I agree with that. Okay, Jared? I, I'd make a comment if there was a motion on the table at this time. I, I Everything that's been said has been said. Okay, all right. Thank you, Jared. Ellen's good. So it looks like, Brian, do you need us to do a motion or anything? No, I, I, I do appreciate your, your thoughtful consideration of this. I think that um, the administrators did a really nice job. I think the teachers are doing an incredible job. I hope it was clear to everyone that we are focusing on mental health. We're focusing on people's well-being, self-care. All of those things are part of our connected learning model. Um, so at this point, um, what I would plan to do is tomorrow morning, um, I could do it this evening, but I don't want to probably um, send something out after 10 o'clock at night, but um, I would send a notification to parents with a revised school calendar, and I would let them all know tomorrow morning um, to expect that we will work through April vacation, and the last day of school will be Thursday, June 11th. Right. Yes, that'd be great. And and I know I, I think I speak on the whole board that all of you guys putting together this presentation was amazing. I think it helped a lot of us see clearly what's going on in all our schools day to day, and it really helped make decisions. And I really appreciate you all taking the time to be on here and answer all of our questions. Thank you very much, because I'm sure that took a lot of time to put so together. I, yeah, Heather, I would like to kick them all off after That's I make one, one final comment that uh, Mrs. Barry sitting quietly is not reflective of her massive contributions to this. So um, MC, thank you for all of your continued efforts. And uh, it, it's great to hear the um, individual musicians play, but without a conductor, um, it doesn't always sound that nice. So um, thank you for that. And I would uh, tell all of the administrators, um, go to bed. Yes, thank you very much. Good night. Board members, we still have a few more things to go through. <laughs> Heather. Yes. It's Denise. Yes, Denise. When we first started off this conversation, we had a motion. Um, 
Ellen had moved that the Gosstown Board go along with the overwhelming survey and unanimous support of the Gosstown Board that we cancel the April break, seconded by Jared Talbot. And then we didn't go anywhere else with it. So I'd need a vote on that. Oh, I thought we did vote on April vacation. I didn't grasp it. Okay, we could do it again. No worries. All right, so we have the motion for canceling April break. Let's go ahead and do a roll call. Dan? Yes. Ellen? Yes. Tim? Yes. Susanna? Yes. Now? Yes. Jared? Yes. Ginny? Yes. Retta? <laughs> I think she's yes, trying to no no my yes. my uh space bar didn't work that time yes <laughs> Heather yes so Denise we're unanimous thank you thank you all right so moving on to contracts so is this Scott with Northeast she yeah I have I have several so I just wanted to update you on uh, on contracts that are upcoming uh we do rent on an annual basis north uh, the Northeast Sheet Metal building a portion of it for all, uh, Alt Ed, and um, I will be uh, doing a one-year extension for that. Um, the I'm going to skip down to the YMCA aftercare. Uh, we had discussions about whether or not to have an agreement for uh, before and after school care and having agreements and. I've spoken to you about that and my concerns with, with having those agreements in place. And I've also had discussions with, with the YMCA. And my recommendation is that we continue to affiliate ourselves with the YMCA, but, it, but their relationship will be bound by our facility use policy. And I need your authority because in terms of the facility use policy, it's bound in terms of specificity, in terms of how much I, am, I can charge them uh, based upon uh, half day, a full day rental. Theirs is a lot different than any other, you know, typical use. I, I would need your authority to enter into, I guess, a, a special schedule with the YMCA because they do use Bartlett and Maple Avenue. They use the gyms, they use classrooms. Um, theirs is a very unique um, situation. It's not, it would not fit within the fee schedule that you have in, in your facility use policy. Okay, thank you, Scott. Ellen, I saw your hand up. Yeah, thank you. Um, a couple of questions come to mind right off is, what is the fee now and what is it based on? And two, this, the before and after school programs, I believe that children and their, their parents pay for it. Am I correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, what is it currently and what would you see it happening afterwards and would that impact whether we have I, I a before and after school program? In public session, I don't think it would be wise to have a conversation as to what I think it should be. I believe they pay $2,000 a year to use the facility, um, but I would rather not have a discussion what I think it should be. I, I would share if I may, Heather, uh, this program is incredibly important to families. We have a lot of families that rely on um, before and after school care. And I think uh, specifically, Mr. Gross, what you're looking for is a fee waiver um, for policy KF um, as a special consideration for the before and after school care program by the YMCA. Okay, thank you, Brian. Dan, go ahead. And I would think that that fee waiver would be comparable to what they're paying now. So it's not really a fee waiver. It would be a fee structure. Yes. Or did I hear you? You're correct, Dan. I'm, I'm asking. I, and I can come back to you um, later, or we can discuss it in a non-public session. Um, and tonight's probably not this is the length of this meeting, not, not a good time to do it. And I don't need it to be urgent, but um, I would be asking for just a, um, it is a waiver of the structure, but it'll be allowing me to negotiate a different fee with the YMCA. Could we not just direct administration to do that on our behalf and then come back with a recommendation? Yes, that's fine. That's fine. So I'll come back to you 
uh, at a subsequent meeting, maybe the next one or the one after that with a recommendation as to what I think it should be. Okay. Fair enough. And that would be in a non-public <laughs> session. Right. So we need to make sure we can figure yes. that out. Okay. So that'll come back on the, potentially the next meeting or the meeting after. Right. Okay. All right. Is there anything else? Oh, yeah. so, I, I, I think we need to actually make a motion, Scott, to renew the Northeast Sheet Metal contract. Yes, you would. Okay, I, I make a motion that we extend and renew the Northeast Sheet Metal contract for an additional Correct. year. Correct. Okay, thank you, Dan. Is there a second? I'll second that, Susanna. Uh, thank you, Susanna. Is there any other questions? Okay, seeing none, I'm gonna do a roll call. Dan? Yes. Ellen? Yes. Tim? Yes. Susanna? Yes. Janelle? Yes. Jared? Yes. Ginny? Yes. Retta? Yes. And Heather, yes. So we're unanimous, Denise, for the Northeast Sheet Metal all right, Scott, is there anything else? With yeah, this? so I, I have two other, I have two transportation contracts. I have spoken with you in non-public session about the two providers. The first is special education, Durham Transportation. Um, they have, um, we have, I have discussed this with them so I can publicly say that their contract is a 3.8% increase in the first year and then a 3% increase in the next two years. Um, I, have, I have had that transportation contract uh, reviewed by our attorney at Soloway and Hollis. Um, and uh, uh, attorney Snyder reviewed it for both the Goffstown board and the new Boston board as well and split the cost on that. Um, so that has been, um, has been vetted. I also um, inserted language just recently uh, due to what we're going through right now uh, that gives us a, a little bit more flexibility. I used words like epidemic and pandemic in terms of our ability to uh, cease paying. And um, that is currently with Durham and Goffstown Truck Center. I will tell you that um, both providers did not, did, were not surprised by me asking for that paragraph late in the game. They've seen it before. Um, so I, I do believe that they will add that to our, our contract. Um, so, you know, with that, um, with regard to Durham, we'll do that one first. Again, that was a, a three-year contract and that was with two option years as well. So I would just need your authority to execute the contract again, uh, pending final, you know, verbiage, but I'm pretty confident that's gonna happen. Okay, thank you, Scott. Is there a motion for Durham? I'll make that motion. Thank you, Tim. Is there a second? This is Jared, I'll second. Jared, second. Sorry, Janelle. Anybody have any other questions, comments? Okay, seeing none, we'll do a roll call. Dan? Yes. Ellen? Yes. Tim? Yes. Susanna? Yes. Janelle? Yes. Jared? Yes. Ginny? Yes. Retta? Yes. And Heather, yes. So we're unanimous on that, Denise. So then the second one. Second one was Goffstown Truck Center. Again, uh, this one was a uh, five-year contract with uh, two option years. The first year being the highest. It was uh, almost 11.8. Uh, I think it was about almost 12% first year, then three in each subsequent year. Um, you'll recall that theirs is a little bit different than Durham in terms of um, their buses in terms of the investment, uh, 24 buses. It's, it's just a little bit different in terms of the uh, retention and attraction of, uh, and attracting uh, bus drivers. Uh, that said, um, I spoke with the management over at STA regarding that same language. Again, he was not um, surprised by the language. It was similar language that a fellow BA and Pelham had in their contract. And when I saw that, I'm like, we probably should add it to ours in terms of what we're going through um, right now. So again, that's just um, pending their agreement to insert it. I'd be prepared to execute that contract as well. Okay, thank you, Scott. So and that was what, I and we also, but this is all that we budgeted. So it all fits in line with what we budgeted um, in the upcoming FY21 budget. Okay. Do we have a motion for the Goss Town Truck Center? Ellen? 
Yes, I move the approval of the Goff Sound Truck Center. Okay, okay. thank you, Ma'am. Do we have a second? I'll second that, Zuzana. Okay, thank you, Susanna. All right, any other questions for Scott? Tim, did you have a question? No. Okay. All right, so we're going to do a roll call. Dan? Yes. Ellen? Yes. Tim? Yes. Susanna? Yes. Janelle? Yes. Jared? Yes. Ginny? Yes. Retta? Yes. And Heather? Yes. So we're unanimous, Denise. Okay. That was that all I had. Yeah. And, and I just wanted to say before, I, I, I'm not going to be on it after this, I, I was really unbelievably impressed with those pre presentations. Um, I am so proud to work for this school district and uh, seeing what my peers did. It's just, it's just amazing. It blew me away. Yeah. Thank you, Scott. Yeah. Well said. All right. So Brian, Board authorization request, you need some motions to grant continued authorization to the superintendent under temporary regulations. The motion has been typed up. If somebody would like to make that motion. Is this the Jared that. thing or, okay, go ahead, Jared. Oh, I say that as I'm trying to pull it up. Um, uh, I think it was Tim. Yeah, one second. Pulling it back up. Uh, I would make a motion to, uh, da, da, da. Brian, do we need to reference the previous one in this that you have typed up there in the request? Yeah, would it be helpful if I read it? I mean, I have it in it front would. of me. It's, yeah, go yes, ahead. Yes, it would. Okay. Um, so the motion would be to grant continued authorization to the superintendent under temporary regulation. Um, Sorry, I've got two. I've got a little tiny screen here. <laughs> um, under the superintendent's emergency operation plan for COVID-19 is a temporary regulation to policy EBCF, pandemic epidemic emergencies, and to grant the superintendent or his designee authorization to respond at his discretion to changing public health circumstances and to allow the superintendent the ability to modify or adapt school board policy as needed with an update provided at the next successful school board meeting. Thank you, Brian. So Tim, you make that motion? I make that motion. Okay, thank you. Who would like to second? Janelle? Okay, thank you, Janelle. Janelle will second. Any questions before I call roll call? Oh, Jared, do you have a question? Unfortunately, again, I will be voting no on this as there is no sunset expiration date listed within the motion. When I look at our prior meeting minutes, we've always added that this would be valid through the next successful school board meeting or May 4th, uh, or it, which is May 4th. Currently scheduled end. for, we probably okay. add those words to the end. Yeah, um, I do. So unless if but, there's an amendment, I, I will not be able to vote yes on this. And just for giggles, Heather? Yes. The governor has extended the school year to ever, nothing in June. Nobody's going back to buildings. Right. Is that also a presumption that he has extended or can he extend that remote learning without having extended the COVID-19 pandemic emergency it's uh, kind of like a legal question right well, yeah i i would say um i i did include the sentence um until the next and uh, with an update provided at the next successful school board meeting um right. the, gov the mr cloutier is absolutely correct the governor has closed schools for the remainder of the school year so the may 4th date is gone um, at this point, I would say for the duration, for the remaining um, duration of the 2019-2020 school year, and we also need to remember for extended school year, we have a number of special education children, as well as Title I and some regular ed students who participate in our summer programming. So we'll need to think about this a little later in the school year, but um, this will continue the circumstances will will need to continue into the summer as well. Right. Go ahead, as, Dan. As a follow-up, 
we can always rescind this permission at a school board meeting. Mm -hmm. So given that the governor has said remote learning, this gives the superintendent, rather than two week planning sessions, the rest of the year to get things done, update us at every successful board meeting. And if we don't like what's happening, we use our authority. Right. Thank you, Dan. Okay, so I have a motion on the table. We have a second. We've talked about it. It says to the next successful board meeting. Is there any other questions? Okay, I'm gonna take a roll. Just, just, oh. just to be clear, it's because I wanna make sure that we all understand, he's getting permission for the rest of the school year because I believe the motion said with an update provided at right. the next session. So this gives him till the end of the year and I want that in the notes, so to speak. Um, that Mrs. Morin is taking in the discussion. That's what I'm voting on. Okay. So, so where's the till the end of the year actually within the, the verbiage, uh, I guess is my question. It's right uh, where the end of the year is not within the motion itself, Jared. It simply reads, it's in, it's section C of the agenda. It does not say till the end of the year in that. Um, if if I may, Heather. Yes, Brian, please. It would, it would be easy enough to just amend the motion and where it says um, to allow the superintendent the ability to modify or adapt school board policy as needed until the end of the 2019-2020 school year with an update provided at the next successful school board meeting. So you could just insert that uh, for the remainder of the 2019 2020 school year and then we would need to do something similar prior to our extended school year programs um, happening in July. Right. Jared, does that work for you? Absolutely, because it, it's really important that we make sure that we have the affirmative notion in place that we're granting this authority, the special authority to our superintendent and their peers, or I'm sorry, and his, his, his people. Okay. I would amend my motion to read as such. Uh, and Janelle, you second the amendment. Denise, did you get all that? Yep. Okay, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna do a roll call. Dan. Yes. Ellen. Yes. Tim. Yes. Susanna. Yes. Janelle. Yes. Jared. Yes. Ginny. Yes. Retta. Yes. And Heather, yes. So we're unanimous on granting authorization for the superintendent. It looks like the second one, we need to grant authorization to the business administrator to pay bills. There is a motion already typed up. The motion is requested to continue to pay bills as we have been doing for the last number of months through the next successful board meeting. So moved. Okay, thank you, Dan. Ellen, you second? Okay, does anybody have any questions on that? Seeing none, we'll do a roll call. Anne? Yes. Ellen? Yes. Tim? Yes. Susanna? Yes. Janelle? Yes. Jared? Yes. Ginny? Yes. Retta? Yes. And Heather? Yes. We're unanimous, Denise. Okay, the last part is school staffing. I know there was a sheet sent out, Brian. Yeah, and um, the, the one that I just pulled up, Scott, can you put up the second staffing sheet that Mrs. Morin sent out, the one that um, there was a revised sheet? If you could just pull that up real quick, if you have a chance. That's Sorry, right. I should have I should have given you notice on that. Scott. If you could keep talking and uh, stretch it out, I will get it. I will get it going. He has uh, three teachers. Yeah. So the in in the the original staffing sheet only had one. So had one. go through. Uh, we have a resignation from Amelia Talbot, who is a um, classroom teacher at Maple Ave. That's the first uh, resignation. Move to accept. Well, do you want to do all three at the same time, Brian, or do you want to do each one individual? Um, this is the only name on the one that I have. I know the second name. Was oh, 
Jacqueline Nate Lambert. Yeah, this is all, Brian, this is all I have, I think, that Denise sent, this one, Amelia oh, Talbot. No, she sent another one. I okay. got it. Okay, hold okay. on. Um, it, it was Nate Lambert, and I can't remember who the third teacher was. Jacqueline Look Moulton. at today, Scott. Oh, it, right, Jackie Moulton. Jackie Moulton is a part-time uh, physical education teacher at Bartlett. At Bartlett. And uh, ja Jackie, this will be her second retirement. So Jackie was um, a, a New Boston teacher that I um, absolutely think the world of. And Scott, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Don't All worry right. about it. Um, but it, so it would be those three teachers. And uh, Nate Lambert, I'm, I'm real sorry to see Nate go. Um, but Nate's going to be moving away from this part of the country. And uh, I wish him and his family well, as, uh, as well as the other two. And he's high school biology. High school biology. Okay. So we... To accept it. <laughs> Thank you, Ellen. I have a motion from Ellen. Oh, Jared, did you have a uh, question? Just, no, no, just a statement. Just as... Um, for the teacher res resignations, Amelia Talbot, no relation. So therefore, I'll be voting on this. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jared. Uh, that was a good good point, Jared. That is a good call. Okay. So do I have a second? Anybody seconding? I'll second that. Oh, thank you, Donna. All right. So we have a motion and a second. Any other questions? Okay. I'll do a roll call. Dan? Yes. Ellen? Yes. Kim? Yes. Susanna? Yes. Janelle? Yes. Jared? Yes. Ginny? Yes. Retta? Yes. And Heather? Yes. We're unanimous, Denise. So is there any other business that may legally come before the meeting? Any, Jared? Just as a question, and, and I'd like to address this to Superintendent Bulky. With the presentations that we received today that were done very well, I'd like to potentially look at further um, thoughts uh, now that we have this infrastructure in place to potentially look at not having snow days into the future. Um, so whether it be next year, the years after, uh, but I would like the superintendent and potentially administration to review a potential request that may be coming to look at this interactive model of learning, this remote learning and potentially replacing uh, stay at home snow days as we look into further school years. It's, uh, it, it's funny that you raised that, Jared, because I historically have been so against um, blizzard bags and, and really, um, I, I, I'm with you 100% now. Th this has totally and completely changed my perspective. Um, but I will say, what you just saw tonight is nothing like what the so-called traditional blizzard bags were. And to be set up to have a, a really elegant day of pre-planned lessons, I am fully in support of. It, it's funny, I shared with uh, our regional superintendents group on Friday that my recommendation would be um, moving forward that we would absolutely adopt blizzard bags and we would no longer have snow days altogether. So I, I, uh, I respect that, Jared, and uh, we're, we're on it. That'd be great. <laughs> have, oh, I'm sorry, I, some people are raising their hands. Yeah, I see that. Derek, did you have more to say? Um, I think there's gonna, that may spawn a conversation, but um, I'll, I'd like to make a motion potentially later based on the conversation that's about to occur. Oh, okay. So you making a motion? No, ahead, not Dan. yet. I know, I know that oh. Dan and Janelle are raising their hands for comments. So. Okay. Go ahead. I don't know who raised their hand first, so. Oh, I'm not on mute. Sorry, Janelle. All right. Go ahead, Dan. We would need legislative action or change our model from school days to hours in, in order to not incorporate 10 snow days into a calendar. So we have to account for them, but we don't have to use them. That's legislatively mandated. Okay, thank you, Dan. Janelle? I, I just had this discussion with Jeff um, last night and I think that it's a fantastic idea that I'm sure that uh, 
districts around the nation are looking at that, or maybe not around the nation, but the snowy districts um, are looking at it's, uh, but it's, it is a little bit different than what we have right now where we're getting uh, all of this in place. Everybody's, you know, hit the ground running, uh, but it took a couple weeks to get there. So, I mean, there'll be a lot of uh, logistics to, to work out, but very interesting idea and uh, love to be posted on that. Keep kept yes, posted. Yeah. Yeah, Jared, I, I really appreciate it. And uh, um, actually, spoiler alert, I asked Mrs. Barry about a week and a half ago to start working on a presentation to adopt a blizzard bag type model. So um, I think right now it's, it's probably not um, of the highest priority for us. I, I think if you would be willing to give us, I, I think I absolutely hear it, it sounds like um, folks are interested in moving forward with having a presentation brought to you about shifting to a blizzard bag model. There are a couple of things that are different in the current um, rule change that the state board adopted. There is no partici participation requirement percentage. I believe that under the blizzard bag proposal, it has to be an 80% participation rate. I think we get that, um, but I do want you to know that that participation rate is a factor for blizzard bags. But um, if, if the board uh, would be willing to give us a little bit of time, I'd like to come back to you at a later point with a full proposal. Yeah, I think that would be great. I think we really would like to look into that. Now I saw Ellen had a hand and I see Retta just put a hand up <laughs> and so did Ginny. So go ahead, Ellen. <laughs> okay, excuse me. <coughs> I would go one step further and at some point, not not right now, but like to ask administration and staff to look into how we can uh, use this remote learning process uh, even more for day-to-day -day lessons and homework and so forth. But uh, my agenda says there's an SSS technology supervision nominations, and then it says other Glenn Lake new teacher proposal. Is that gone uh, or? The agenda got changed and a new okay. one was sent. Okay. So, what, so those are not on it. Those are not on it. Is that okay, correct? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Alan. Uh, Retta, you had your hand up? Yeah, I just wanted to add that um, as you're working on that presentation or M MJ's working on that uh, presentation, if we could make sure that we have the administration weigh in on it as well. Just logistically, I think it would just make things, um, it, it would just make it go smoothly. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we'll, we'll certainly have um, administrative input as well as teacher input. Thank you. Ginny, I know you had your hand up. Um, yes, I think it's probably a good idea, but I think everybody has an awful lot on their plate right now. So I think maybe it's a good idea to look towards the summer, um, maybe to start work on that instead of now when they've got so much on their plate to to be working on. My thought, a later date. Thank you, Jenny. Janelle? Just real quick to add to that, maybe it might be something that we could look at, um, you know, for our retreat, something we could put on the agenda and kind of look forward to, yeah. for next year's goals. That sounds like a good idea. Retta, what do you think of that? Shut a thumbs up. Brian, would that work for a retreat? We've got topic? one agenda item now. We got one agenda item. I think it's a great agenda item moving forward to next year because we will be back to school next year. So... We need to start thinking, yes, fingers crossed, we need to start thinking of snow days, so. All right, is there any other, yes, go ahead, Janelle. Um, I just had a quick question. I was curious about um, the committee work and if we could restart that and do some remote meetings. I know there's a lot of important work that was being done before all this happened and a lot of work that needs to get done. I'm just curious uh, what's holding up that process. Brian? Yeah, I, I would say that um, it. we probably are at a point where we could start doing some of that work again, Janelle. Um, it might be good for the board to kind of think about how we could prioritize that. Obviously, it would need to be a similar type platform that we would utilize Zoom. Um, historically, we don't broadcast those subcommittee meetings, but that's not a problem. We could still allow for the opportunity 
um, consistent with the governor's executive orders to make sure that the meeting is still 91A compliant. Um, and we certainly could start to do that. Um, and I, you know, when you hear the, the, the principals and the administrators talk about starting to find that balance, I think administratively we're, we're starting to find that balance too. So, you know, we would be where if, if you would have wanted to, you know, have subcommittee meetings a couple of weeks ago, um, I, I would have told you that we probably couldn't have pulled that off, but um, let me, let me talk to the administrators and maybe we could start to come up with a plan for how those meetings could occur. I'm sure Mr. Gross would like to get back into having A and F meetings. Um, he's shaking his head. He's yes, I see. His head no. <laughs> All right, that would be great. Maybe have an update at the next meeting for that. Yes. Thank you, Brian. Ellen, I think I, Janelle, is that it? Okay. Uh, Ellen, I saw your hand up. Uh, thank you. I know um, building committee. Is a I'm supposed to give a report. We're supposed to give a report before the end of this school year. Of course, we have not been meeting. Um, we are at a certain point, and unless um, our uh, logistics group, that's Jared, um, meets or co can come up with some uh, detailed information with regard to costs and things, um, I know I'd like to bring forward some, a, a report as to where we're at and possibly raise this uh, the topic of a uh, school space needs at our retreat as well for the board to have some discussion and consideration of various options going forward okay. maybe maybe heather if i may mm -hmm. maybe we could think about each committee kind of thinking about what they would need to be doing and what that would look like um i think c and e would be the one that i might ask for a reprieve on um right now all of the focus around teaching and learning is obviously um, fully 100% focused on remote instruction. So I, I think um, policy work could probably get back to it. I think PNC could get back to it. Um, ANF, I know Mr. Gross just enthusi enthusiastically wanted to get ANF back going. Um, so maybe we could think about it on a kind of a case by case basis. The building committee is probably going to be difficult. I think that there is just so much going on and so much that, um, you know, so for example, we have not engaged um, in the work with the community planner because of the circumstances. So, so some of the building committee work might be difficult, but maybe on a committee by committee basis, uh, we could think about that and we'll include that on the next um, school board agenda. Mrs. Morin, if you would just make a note of that. All right, perfect. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought the building committee was voted on to put on hold for an extended period of time. So we would need to have a motion and a vote to take it off of hold, if I recall correctly. I, we, we can go back. I, I believe that's correct, Jared. Yeah, um, that correct. And so maybe at, at our next meeting, maybe we could go committee by committee and uh, the committee chairs could think about what you might recommend and then we can think about what's practical and makes good logical sense okay just a point um they're going to have to when the committee start up they're going to have to elect their chairs right i was just going to say that thank yeah. you denise that we haven't oh. no one has met since our march vote correct we have um We've we need to organize. But we have not met and therefore elected new chairs for each committee. So we could do that as part of um, as part of that process. So at our next meeting, why don't we go ahead and establish those committee structures? Um, and at the very least, we could you know have the the members who are on those committees could weigh in, even even though if if a, a chair hasn't been elected for the committees yet. Okay. At, least, yeah. at least to Janelle's point, at least to get some of that work back going again. Right. No, definitely. Retta, you have something? Yeah. Um, our our P, next PNC meeting is May 4th prior to our next meeting, and we need to vote on scholarships. Um, so if it's okay, I'd, I'd like to be a guinea pig with that committee. Well, I'm, I'm just a member um, at that point. Um, but to to go ahead and plan for the May 4th because we have Ashley Barisi um, planning to come in to give us an update. 
Okay. Right. And that was mentioned during your agenda right. item. Tonight. So, okay. So May 4th PNC meets and then the rest of the committees will talk about at our next meeting to figure out when we're going to start meeting again. Is that correct, Brian? Yes. Okay. All right. Perfect. Is there anything else anybody wants to say before we adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. All right. Thank Second. You. Second. I saw Janelle's hand go up first, Dan. Sorry. That's okay. That's okay. We're going to vote anyway. Well, and before we vote, I want to thank you guys all for figuring out the three-day flex April vacation. I know that was a hard decision for everybody. Thank you, Brian, for getting our administration here. I think that really helped everybody to make the best decision that we could. So I appreciate it. Uh, and, uh, right. and Heather, I would just offer my appreciation to you. Not easy to chair a meeting like this, but you guys are really getting the groove down. So well, well done. <laughs> well done, Heather, and well done, everybody. Thank you. Yes, it's definitely a different way of having a meeting. I want to get back together in the high school. <laughs> All right, Dan? Yes. Ellen? Yes. Tim? Yes. Susanna? Yes. Janelle? Yes. Jared? Yes. Ginny? Yes. Retta? Yes. And Heather, yes. So we are adjourned. Thank you, everybody, and have a good night. Have a good Thank night. You. Good night. Bye.